I believe we are live. Um, Dad, would you be able to grab my iPad out for me? Yes. So I can see, it's in my backpack, so I can see the comments, make sure we're all good. I can go on here too, just to make sure. All right, is anybody out there? Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, great, thank you very much. Facebook? Yes, please. Okay, I'm going to try not to break anything here. There we go. All right. Can you guys see me on the other devices? Yeah, there we go. All right. That way we will be able to read comments. Wonderful. Can you guys see and hear us okay? Everybody all good? There's a little lag still. Take a minute. Stephanie is watching. Stephanie, yep. Sharon. Sandra. Sandra. Sharon. So. Hi guys. Can you guys hear us okay and see everything all good? Want to make sure we don't have any technical glitches before we start. See some thumbs up. Hi Mariana. Stephanie Maslin says hi Galperns and Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> hi Stephanie. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, awesome. They're saying they can hear and see us. How are you guys doing? Awesome. Make sure to write where you're watching from. It's always fun to see where everybody is in the world. Awesome. Hi, Sharon. How are you doing? Awesome. Davinia is here. Lori is here. Everybody from class yesterday is here. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Everybody's fingers rested up. <laughs> no burns, hopefully. Go wear gloves. <laughs> They're all wearing their gloves, <laughs> right? <laughs> awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Perfect. All right, looks like we're good. Tell us. Okay, awesome. We have 21 people on so far. Hi, Sandy. How are you doing today? Sandy. Hi, Karen. Fantastic. So we'll just wait a minute or so and make sure everything's good and then we will get started. Kathy is from Connecticut. Hashtag hooked on ice malt. I love that hashtag. <laughs> Hi, Kim. Hi, Sally. So, Marsha. Hi, Marsha from Indianapolis. So, Hi. California. So. Lori's watching from work. <laughs> we want to have some work. <laughs> Love that. Okay, awesome. All right, so, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. We yes. are so excited, <laughs> and I'm so excited and honored to have Chef oh, Nicholas my goodness. here Love in the studio great. today. Great. <laughs> we had such a great day yesterday. We had our Zoom class. That we was did. so much fun. It was. Um, and so, yeah, we decided we would do a live stream as well for you guys of the cherry blossoms. So, again, combining our techniques yeah, with yeah. the beautiful... Um, flowers here, the cherry blossom flowers, and then of course the uh, branches and the rocks and everything. We're going to show you everything from head to toe of how yep. to create this piece. And of course some more different variations and uh, you know ways that you can do it too. So Cute. Um, yeah, so make sure you ask any questions. Um, we're going to be mon monitoring as we switch off too if there's any questions. And um, I have an iPad set up here so we'll be able to read through the chat. And of course mom and dad are here too so they'll be able to shout out any questions that anybody asks. So feel free to ask uh, as many questions as you would like while we are here. Let's see. Oh, awesome. We got a whole bunch of people on. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Shirley, Daniela, Rebecca. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, perfect. So we are going to go ahead yeah. and start. Um, Nicholas is going to start. I'm just going to switch the camera down. Cool. Here perfect. To Thank you so much. Work area and I will pass it off to you. Okay. Okay, so hi guys, and I hope everybody's well. And obviously, as Sydney said, we had such a fun time yesterday. Um, so today we're going to be doing a live on uh, a cherry blossom bonsai tree. So obviously, you know, bonsai is a Asian form of miniature trees, um, and this is a perfect way to showcase uh, the cherry blossom you can see here. But as Sydney said, you could change this out. So let's say, for example, like using my part of the the cherry blossom, I'm going to be using my flower pro. Um, so, for example, using my uh, foliage mold, which is going to have maple leaves, Japanese maple, there's some little tiny and medium and larger size Japanese maple. So in the fall, you could maybe do this in an orange or chocolate brown isomalt 
and then you could attach little ch um, Japanese maple leaves. So this would be really nice to use as a topper, for example, for uh, like a man's cake or for an anniversary or a topper on a fall wedding cake. It has some little pumpkins down here. So really it's a very versatile technique to use um, with all different types of uh, leaves on, okay? But as I said, you know, cherry is obviously such an iconic spring flower. Um, it's a really beautiful way to, uh, to showcase this. Now, um, obviously some of you have already got the kit. So we do have the kit available through Simi Cakes. And so this is the cherry blossom kit. There's also the uh, Sydney side of it, which is gonna have the base and then obviously the isomalt part as well. But in the cherry blossom kit, it obviously has the mold, it has the floral tape, the stamens, the wires, uh, the pink and green paste, the little pads, some tools, cosmetic sponges. Um, of course, all of these things are available individually, but it's just this is convenient, especially if you don't want to buy a whole pack of wire and uh, things like that. And of course, I've colored the paste for you, so it's all portioned out, so it's sort of it's uh, ready to go. Uh, we will, because um, I'm down here in Florida for another week, I don't go back to Atlanta until a week today. Um, we do have, uh, I think there's two of those, is that right, Michelle, available? Yeah, we have two two kits available on simicakes.com. And then the thing is, there will be a delay till next month. So we can ship those out starting like next Monday from Atlanta uh, directly to you. And then obviously Sydney can get out and Michelle and Mike can get out the... Uh, the simi cakes part of that sometime this week um so as i said you know if you if you want in the kit that is something will be available again um it's just temporarily unavailable once we sell the two but if you get online quickly um you can hopefully snag one of those last two kits all right but anyway so um the kit is going to have uh first of all the main part of it is going to be of course the cherry blossom this is my flower pro cherry blossom mold and this is a uh, beautiful mold that i designed uh with with obviously for flower pro but uh the mold here here is actually got um, like three different cavities on here. So these three cavities, this is the one I'm going to use today, which is the one with like, almost like the heart shaped petals. And this makes the Yoshino cherry, which is basically traditional Japanese cherry. Like in cities like Washington, D.C., the um, Japanese government after the war gave America the cherry blossom trees. So in Washington, D.C., all of those were donated by Japan to the U.S. And then we in return gave dogwood to the Japanese. So like in Hibiya Park in Tokyo, uh, they have all the dogwood trees, obviously were given by the United States. But this makes the traditional cherry blossom flower. This one here I use for apple blossom and also for peach blossoms. And uh, uh, and then you can use this one for like, um, sorry, for peach blossoms here. And then this one can be used for plum, but also things like pear blossoms and other things. And this is also a versatile mold. You could use this for stephanotis. You could use it for lemon and orange blossoms. Uh, you can use it for a little mini orchid backs. You can use it for um, this one here for delphinium. So it's a very, very versatile mold. Old. And it has on it the um, these are the calyxes. So there's two sizes of calyxes, and then these are like little smaller, slightly serrated leaves, and then these ones are larger serrated leaves, which would be the ones I use for the cherry. And then here we have the bud cavities. So there are three bud cavities: small, medium, and large. And this makes a more rounded bud. And then there's small, medium, and large of more an elongated bud. Okay, and so that's. Um, and you can see here, this shows you on the leaflet. Now the leaflet pretty much is your book, all right? This has got obviously all of the step-by-step -step photographs in here and the directions of how we make everything. And here you can see this actually highlights what I've just discussed with you, which are the components of the cherry and the plum and the um, obviously pear blossoms and things. And um, Cherry can be used in lots of different ways. Um, they obviously, you can see here a beautiful wedding cake where I've got the cherry. This is double prunus, double flowering cherry, which goes up the side of the cake. Now in your leaflet, and of course you can, uh, if you don't have the mold, you can of course go uh, on and look at these. But if you go to katiesuedesigns.com forward slash flower pro, all right, that is where you'll find actually nearly 60 YouTube videos for my Flower Pro. So there actually are three videos that specifically deal with the blossoms. So if you go to, as I say, katiesuedesigns.com forward slash Flower Pro, um, you're going to see three videos. The first one shows how to make the uh, single flowering cherry, which is the type I'm showing you today. And so this here you see is a Yoshino cherry. So this is a single flowering cherry. So on that video, I show really what I'm going to do today, but in more detail of how we make the centers, how we make the petals, how we make the buds, how we make the calyx, how we make the leaves, and then going through the coloring of it. And then the second video shows how to make the double flowering cherry. The double flowering cherry is this type here, which is basically like a double version and is the type I've used on the cake here. 
and uh, also how I put flowers together in natural arrangements, like how to make them look like, you know, like a branch of cherry growing up your cake. And then the third video actually deals with um, three other blossoms, which it shows how to make the apple blossom. Um, so this is the apple blossom here, so it shows how to make apple blossoms. And you can see these ones are made in the more elongated bud, okay? So those are made in the more elongated bud. And then it also shows how I do um, peach blossoms. So obviously, like being from Georgia, we're a peach state. So obviously in South Georgia at the moment, like a few weeks ago, all of the peach trees were in bloom. And uh, so this is peach blossom. Okay, again, very beautiful. And then also I have on there the plum blossom, which is the ume. And uh, this is sort of traditional, uh, you know, so in countries like Korea and Asia, and so actually with my Flower Pro Ultimate Members Club, we have just done an arrangement with camellias, red camellias, uh, pink plum blossoms, ginkgo leaves, Japanese maple. Um, and uh, also, as I said, so we use this as sort of one of the pieces in there. So this is the plum blossom. And so those are all shown on the third video. All right. Now, when we make uh, when we make the blossoms, all right, you can watch obviously the videos, but actually also in here, there are several ways you can make the centers of the blossoms. One of them is to use stamens, all right, which is obviously on the video I show how to use fine Japanese silk stamens, which is something we sell at nicholaslodge.com. And uh, we will put links up at the end as well. And uh, so obviously we have the, um, the uh, stamens. You can also use cotton thread, all right? So you're just gonna use like sewing thread, which I show on the video, where you go around a little scraper like this, and you actually just use yellow or pink or green sewing thread all right which i show on obviously some of the blossoms and then uh, you can also use fishing filament which is actually just like fishing line like a two to four pound fishing line uh, because a lot of my um, in my flower pro ultimate members club a lot of my members work in uh, polymer clays and air drying clays so if you were going to use say for example the cherry blossoms on a wreath on your front door or in a bathroom where you have moisture um, the uh, using a fishing filament the stamens are not going to go soft all right and then the other way you can do this which actually i talk about on the third video is this is using a fringing so this fringing uh which comes in the kit so you actually get a piece of this which actually is enough to make nine flowers all right um, and actually on the finished bonsai we've made five flowers all right so we've used five flowers but this will enable you to make nine so if you want to make uh, obviously a fuller um, cherry blossom bonsai you of course can um, you make nine centers all right because we've given you 24 wires so you have enough to make your nine flowers and then some buds and leaves and uh, but this is just like a trim all right so as i said in the kit we have this but this is just like a simplicity trim um, so it is also something you can buy online or you can find in fabric stores as well so this is approximately three quarters of an inch wide all right so this is actually a three quarter inch wide uh, polyester trim okay so three quarters of an inch and uh, because that means the actual stamen part of that will be about approximately half an inch from the top to the bottom all right now this is just something that i use so for example in my again flower Pro Members Club, the students today are actually finishing off their Lotus. So what I actually did is on the Lotus, I used a slightly wider version of this. So for the center of the Lotus, we actually went around to make the beautiful center like this of the Lotus. All right. So, so it is something you can use. And this is also a less expensive option, um, for example, than using stamens. Okay. Because out of a bunch of stamens, which are like 450, you're going to be, it's enough to make uh, like about nine flowers. So you're talking about 50 cents per flower for the stamens whereas this was only um this this here was uh this is six feet but this was only like less than seven dollars with shipping so you can make obviously hundreds of uh, flowers with this center okay but anyway so but you can watch the videos and then you can sort of see you know the different techniques but i said if you have the kit this has got nine uh, centers in there okay so so what we're going to do here is all you're going to do is with your scissors so you just need to have some sharpish scissors here you're just going to cut those into nine little uh, groups all right so see how you're gonna have nine little groups like this now as I explained in the kit you have uh, 20 uh, you have 24 um, this camera's gone this screen's gone it's okay it's probably just needs to be rebooted Sydney yeah. uh, but but there are 24 wires these are third length uh, 20 28 gauge wires all right so you've got 24 of those in your kit now in a lot of my classes what I generally do in my classes when I teach flowers I just use like a magnet that's a really good way to keep your little wires so they don't fly in all over the place all right um, so you're going to take your wires so I said they're all the same wires we use for the flower the buds the leaves um, and the centers so all I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold this with my um, with my thumb and finger so I'm right hand 
handed. So you see what I'm doing there is I'm holding this with my thumb and first finger of my left hand. I'm going to bring my wire. So my wire is going to go through, all right? So my wire is going through my fingers like this. And then I change over to my right hand. So you see I'm holding right at the bottom where the stamens meet that solid part. And you're just going to just wrap that wire around. So you're just going to just twist the wire around there like so. So you're just going to go around a couple of times. All right, so you're going to create that little center part. All right, I'm going to show you that one more time so you can sort of see that technique. So remember, so I hold it between my left thumb and first finger. I'm going to take the wire. Okay, so I'm going to have the wire, it's going to go through there. I'm going to hold it and then I'm just going to wrap that around. So you want to just try and get that wire to wrap around. So you just want to wrap around here just a couple of times with your fingers where the where the stamens, you might lose a couple of little odd bits there, okay, but where the stamens, you see that will actually make a half inch long stamen. Now then you're just going to use your scissors, just cut off some of that excess thread, okay, and uh, so you're just going to cut off some of that excess thread. So you've got a little bit of uh, thread there, but not too much, okay, because we don't want to, we don't want to have too much bulk there. Question. Um, of course. Sandra asked, uh, she asked if there was a link to the yellow trim. Do you know where you got it? I just got it on Amazon. Um, I'll, I, what I do is I'll post afterwards the sort of the, the link on it on Amazon, okay? Because I, I just reordered some more this morning. So, but it just, I just put in like yellow fringe, but I will put a link of the actual one I ordered this uh, as soon as I finish my part, okay? Well, Sydney's doing her part, I'll show you. So, anyway, so you, you'd wire obviously all of these and you trim them. So, you see, I just got a little bit of that excess there. So, you cut off some of that bottom part of the fringe, okay? Because if you leave that on there, you're going to have a bulky bottom, and that's not a good thing to have a bulky bottom on your flower, okay? Because it's going to make it difficult to get into the flower center. So you just trim those, trim those off. And then we're going to take some brown floral tape. Now, this is half-width brown floral tape. So I've already, in the kit, I've already pre-cut this for you, okay? But uh, this is done with my uh, tape cutter, all right? So you just rotate the roll of floral tape in here, and it cuts it into half. And then this then will cut it into quarters. But of course, you can also just use a pair of scissors but remember if you have the kit it's already half lit width and all we're going to do here is we're going to just going to stretch your tape because when we use the tape we're going to open up the pores of the tape so you just stretch the tape slightly and then all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to hold the tape and I'm just going to go around once like a piece of string so I'm just literally going to use my tape like a piece of string and just going to tape down to the bottom here like so and then you see, then you're going to get your, your center part there. All right. And then what we're going to do is going to just take some scissors here and just going to just fluff this out. So you're just going to fluff it out with your, your stamens here like that. So you see how it's going to make a nice little fluffy center for your flowers. So, you know, this is something you can sit and uh, work on, watch, watch TV you can keep some, obviously, uh, these in the car you can sit and make these in the car when you go to the doctor's office, the dentist's office, all sorts of places you can sit and make your little centers. So we have your little center part. Now, um, in the kit, I've included 15 grams, all right, which is about three quarters of an ounce of pink, uh, pale pink, and also green paste. Now, this is actually um, uh, an Indian paste by a company called Sugar In. And uh, Sugar In is a company that I have just uh, done a collaboration with, with some new products called Inflexi Paste. This is not Flexi Paste. This is the original uh, flower paste that Sugar In had. But uh, this is very similar to the Flexi Paste. In this paste, it's very different from normal gum paste. It doesn't dry really Really hard. Now my new flexi paste um, is obviously quite quite a lot different in that it stays very soft. All right, Sydney, could you just bring the gardenia the box the gardenia out of the box there? The bigger spray, you know, the larger one we did. And I'll just show you. We've just actually Sydney and I had just finished this morning a collaboration which will uh, will air on um, the eighth of May for Cake Flicks. All right, and so the um, I actually showed how to make this gardenia, but this was made over a week ago, and as you can see, like for example, the calyx is still flexible. This actually product stays flexible for a month, okay? And uh, we're going to put a link up on the um, on the monitor, but if you go to nicholaslodge.in for India, uh, there is um, obviously uh, information about there. You can order this from Sugar Inn in uh, California. You see how it stays flexible, which means that when you make sugar flowers, a lot of times a flower like a gardenia, they get very brittle, and then when you just touch them, the petals break off, but the flexi paste stays. So this is made actually with my flexi paste. The cherry blossom and the green is just the original sugar in paste because when we started shipping the kits we didn't have that in stock thank you sydney 
but uh, so there is, as I said, some information there. And there's also a recipe on there on the nicholaslodge.in of my flexi glue. So this is actually a glue I recommend. Now, for what we're doing in this class, you don't have to use this. But when you use actually my flexi paste, this is a glue Then I have a PDF on the recipe. And then also there's a YouTube video. And all this is is basically making like a roux or a, um, when you make a sort of a roux to go into a custard or, in, for example, a gravy to thicken a stew or a soup. And uh, so really what it is, is just the flexi paste with water and you boil it, add more water and then bring it to the boil, just like you would uh, say a custard or a roux or a gravy to thicken it. And this is just the glue I recommend because this glue, which I call flexi glue, also stays flexible. So when you make flowers like the gardenia that Sydney just brought over, what it means is when we use egg white or edible glue on a flower like a gardenia or rose, when your, your egg white dries or your glue dries, what happens is if you went to move the petal, the egg white or the glue would just give way. The new flexi glue that I recommend for my flexi paste um, is obviously stays flexible. So what it means is that the actual, and if you're making bows or dressing a figure, the glue stays flexible with the paste. But, said, but this, is, this is a starch-based paste, just like my flexi paste. This will stay sort of semi-flexible, but not as flexible as my new flexi paste, all right? But so this is the original one. And this is the green, all right? So this is the green color here. Um, and in the flexi paste, uh, this is called foliage green, all right? And then the pink here, uh, these are the other two colors. There are other colors planned. This is um, the peony pink, all right? And then this is the poppy red. And what I actually did here, this is um, something I developed for Katie Sue. This is called a measuring mold. And this is, was developed uh, for air drying clay, but also for sugar paste and glaze. Uh, also for figure modeling, you can use this, for example, you know, you could use number uh, three sizes for the arms. But as I said, this was made really more for a coloring. And in here, this has got different customized colors. And then also you can see here ombre colors. Now these are the air drying clay. So again, you can watch the video on Katie Sue of using in this but these are air drying clay colors so like when I teach in Sanford and Gainesville this week I will be using air drying clay but for example as you can see the uh, peony pink my fle uh, flexi paste is very similar color to the air drying clay so what I've done actually here to make this really really pale pink I've used the number 10 size color here the number 10 magenta so what I did there is I used a number one of white, so you just fill the mold up level and scrape off the excess. It comes with a little flexi scraper. So you have a number one white, and then I use the number 10 of magenta. So you fill that in. And then what that means is you're gonna get this really softest, softest of pink, all right? But if you were doing a flower like say a peony, where you wanted a little stronger, you could use like a number one of white and a number say seven of the pink, the magenta pink, all right? But uh, you can see here, this shows like obviously here and then a number seven. But it's just a way of getting consistent colors. So if you are those of you that are teachers or for example, uh, you know, do a lot of coloring of gum paste, it's a really great way to do, uh, to get the colors. So, anyway, so we've, in the kit, we've obviously included some of the pale pink. Now, when we uh, make the cherry blossom, so we're gonna, we've now got our stamens made. All right, so, um, so now we're gonna make the flower. So using the Flower Pro Size Guide, measure a number seven small size ball of paste. Now this is the size guide, all right? And of course the size guide we use totally different in this is more of a measuring of paste guide. So we're gonna use a number seven size. Now we include in the kit the cardboard one. We also do sell now a plastic one, which you'll find on nicholaslodge.com. And this is the plastic size guide, which is obviously thin plastic. So this is really durable, especially when you're working with dark colors means you can wipe it clean and things like that. It won't get so sort of dog-eared after time. Anyway, so you're going to take a number uh, seven small. So you're going to take the paste out. Now with the flexi paste or with the sugar in paste, as I said, the, the flexi paste is a little bit softer than this. But basically you just use it in exactly the same way as you would regular gum paste. You usually condition it with a little tiny bit of uh, shortening. So you just would take out some paste there. So you just would work a little bit of shortening into it. But the other thing with this paste, if you find it's a little bit uh, firm for you, or if for example, you're using, you want to um, do something where you want it a little bit softer, all you do there is you just take a little water. So you just dip it in a dish of water and you just work a little bit of water into it. This also means like if you're using the paste and you're rolling it out and you're making flowers and then you're recycling it and re-rolling it out. With a lot of paste, um, you 
you would add sort of generally like egg white to it, but with the with the sugar in paste and the new flexi paste, you just use water for this, all right? And if you actually go back to my Chef Nicholas Lodge to um, St. Patrick's Day, which was obviously 17th of March, that is when this product launched. Um, I have a little video where I showed how to use this for bows and things. Because the wonderful thing with the flexi paste is when you're making bows, you can make your bows like a week before the wedding, and then you can put them on and then the tails will still be flexible when you're doing draping technique and things like that. It works really, really well. So anyway, but um, so it also depends a little bit on the, the temperature of the room you're working in or how hot your hands are um, as to, you know, how soft you want it. But you can just adjust that with water. So anyway, so we're going to take number seven size ball of paste. Now that means with the size guide, we're going to use a number seven. So we're just going to make a number seven go through the hole. We do have a question from okay. Deborah Coughlin. She is asking, is this the same as the icing sheet clay? Uh, no, a little bit diff different, Deborah, but you could totally use the icing sheet clay. You know, icing sheet clay is something I developed for, um, obviously, um, last year for some of my, for icing, for we did the lives, yeah, and uh, yeah, for icing images, and so that's available. And so that is actually made to so use in, but it's similar as well, because obviously, you know, the icing sheets are starch based, so it's a sort of a similar type of clay. Um, and that is also great as well, so you can use that for, but it doesn't stay as flexible flexible really if it dries harder but as I said is an alternative to that but uh, that was a good good uh, question Emily Maxwell asked how many of the stamens should we have wired and wrapped for this project well so I've I did five for my final project and I've given you enough to make nine flowers so if you want to make a foot yeah because also when Sydney shows you the actual bonsai if you want to make it a little bit bigger or Definitely. a little taller and you know that's really up to you but anyway so you're going to take um so you're going to take as I said like a number seven small so you see how that's going to go through the number seven hole and then of course you just if you're going to make let's say five flowers you're just going to make um five number seven balls of paste okay now i'm going to put your paste back in its bag and well, i've given you the paste in little mylar bags and i was telling the group yesterday you know the mylar bags these are excellent i use these a lot now and you just buy these on amazon they work out about 10 cents each but it's a great way to keep your gum paste or your uh, clay and modeling chocolate things like that because it keeps it really really fresh so it's better than just using a regular little zip top bag okay Sorry, so you're going to take your, um, so you, of course, if you're making five flowers, you can just keep your little balls of paste under the little pot that comes with it. It's obviously green as well. And uh, obviously that would just uh, have you measured your balls of paste. Now, when we use the mold, we're going to take the mold here and uh, we're going to use a little bit of uh, shortening into here. Okay. And uh, so we're going to, for the flower, so we're going to take a number seven ball. Um, then you're going to press on top of the smallest bud cavity to create a hat. And then we're going to then um, put this in here. And it talks about a little bit further on. With the shallow mold, you want to use a little bit of vegetable shortening. So you can either use your finger. So you want a little tiny, tiny bit of vegetable shortening on your finger. Not much, all right, just a little tiny bit. Or the other alternative is you can use a brush. And I generally use a brush, a short bristle brush. This is actually a stencil brush. And just keep this solely for this purpose. And as I was showing the group yesterday in our Sydney and I Zoom, um, when you have finished with the mold, this can go in the dishwasher or just put a little bit of dish soap on it, a nail brush, just rinse it and make sure it's dry. Don't leave the uh, Crisco in there. Now, what we're actually going to do here is we're going to use the, uh, the round bud. So we're going to use this small, the smallest size one, which is here. So you're going to take your number seven small and we're going to take that. And then one of your... Um, then Susan's saying she got some of the Mylar bags as well. Yeah, they really work great. So all you do here is to make your little Mexican hat, all right? So the name Mexican hat comes from like a sombrero. And so in flower making, when we talk about Mexican hat method, um, it's almost going to make that little like sombrero shape. But this works wonderful for this. So you basically just take that. So you see how I've just got the little ball is going to go on top of that little cavity there. I'm going to press that down and you see how you're going to get your little sombrero. You see, so then you're going to make the top a little, little, little bit like a little witch's hat there, like so, you see? So you're going to get the little hat shape. And then you're going to take your piece that's going to sit into there. And then what we're actually going to do is going to use the, the back of the, this comes with the mold. You're going to use this, and this is going to just sort of press the paste into the mold here, like so. Got a little bit of pop-up storm here, so hopefully we won't use, lose power. <laughs> And then you're just going to use your, and then with your little kit, we included a little, um, where's the little wedge here? Sorry, I'm just looking for my little. The internet should hold. Yep, hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. 
So you can use your, there's a round cosmetic sponge with hole and there's also a little wedge one in there as well. So you can use either of those. So you see what you're going to do, you're going to use your Dresden tool and you're just going to just use your Dresden tool. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Sydney. And then you see, so the co cosmetic wedge is good because that's sort of a, see, a little bit thinner. And you see how it's going to work the paste into the mold. But you're using your Dresden tool, all right? And so the Dresden tool, you're just going to use that. And you see how I'm just working that down towards the edge of the mold with the Dresden tool. And then using my little cosmetic sponge wedge. Because this is quite a thin flower, the wedge works really, really well in this. But you're just almost working this down. Now in the video, when you watch the full videos, um, you'll see how I also talk about if you do have any area that's a little bit thin, you can just pull from your hat because you're almost using your hat as your, your extra paste. You see how you can just bring, can bring that down like this. I'm going to pull this in. And once you've done this a couple of times, you know, you get pretty quick at it. Okay, so that's going to give you your, your flower part in there. So now we take the back vena. So this is your back vena here. And with your back vena, we're going to turn it over. And that's just going to sit on top of like the little nipple in the middle, the little hat part that's coming up. And just going to press on the top of that with your... You see how that's going to vein the back of your flower. Now, for example, on cookies, so if you wanted to use these on cookies, you could just use a smaller piece of paste, like about a number uh, six size, and you could just literally just fill that flat. And then, of course, you could take that out. You could use little yo uh, yellow nonpareils to make the center of a cookie. So, anyway, so what we're going to do here is we're going to flex this, and your little flower will come out. So you see how you're going to have your cherry blossom. And then we're going to take the little pad. Now, again, the little pad is included in your kit. Um, so this is just a little mini pad. So I'm going to use my Dresden tool. And on the soft side of the uh, soft side of the pad, which is the black side, I'm using my Dresden tool on its side. And I'm just working your edge a little bit like this. Which again, you can see that you actually can sort of see the, um, the pieces uh, in here that are going to come into there and you're going to work that and just work the edge. And you can, like if you want the flower to be, like when you're doing this, for example, to make them more botanically correct, you'll see that on the video, you can also make these little slits. You can just take a pair of scissors and you can just make a little tiny, like almost like a little tiny slice, but it's only like a Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig size, very tiny, okay? So just a little tiny slice between them. And what that means is when you're making, for example, more of a specimen spray, you can have the petals or flowers all at different stages of opening. But what we're doing here today, we don't have to, we can omit that step. We don't need to worry too much about that because we're just doing a basic little cherry blossom. But you see how you're just gonna work that there like so. And then we're going to turn this over onto your cosmetic sponge and you're going to take your little companion tool commonly known as the nick stick and uh, we're going to use the round end of your nick stick and what we're going to do here is on the front side of the pedal we're going to just roll from the outside to the inside so we're just going to just roll from the outside to the inside of the pedal here and what that's going to do is going to cup the petals you see so what you're actually doing there is you're using this like almost like a rolling technique like this so that you see how this now curved your petal to make it look really realistic taking your ball end of your nick stick we're going to then hollow the center so we're going to hollow the center of the flower and then going to use my companion tool i'm going to press into the bottom of each of the petals four five so you create this almost like a little five pointed star onto here we're going to make a little hole through the bottom. All right, so you see that little tool we can use for all of those things. We also do sell uh, on our website. This is a little um, uh, Flower Pro uh, accessory like for, for tools. So this is a little nick stick holder. So this is great to put in your like acupuncture needles, your toothpicks, your paintbrushes, just little small uh, tools there. And uh, so you're going to make this. So then, of course, you take your center. OK, so this will be your center that we've made of our flower. And then you just can take, obviously, on the, the list of uh, what you need for if you've got the kit was uh, to use egg white or edible glue, or you can also use a little bit of piping gel. So yesterday we used uh, in the uh, live, we used like the piping gel and a little needle tip applicator. So, you know, that's really good. You can put a little tiny bit of piping gel around here. But as I said, but or you can use egg white or you can use edible glue. All right. And uh, so all you then would do is you take a little bit of, I said, egg white or edible glue. I'm just using some of my uh, Flower Pro, uh, so, uh, the, uh, here, the glue. And just going to take that, but I said, edible glue or egg white or that is fine. You're going to thread this down through the middle of your flower. You're going to pull this down until this sits in your center. Okay. 
and you see how then you're going to get the, the middle of your cherry blossom. Okay, you're then going to waste this down slightly and then you're just going to just take your scissors and you're just going to cut that off so the back is approximately about a quarter of an inch long. Okay, so you're just going to just take that down, just going to pull this around the bottom there like so. So it's almost like your, your stamens want to just disappear. Don't pull it down too far, okay? The stamens just disappear into there like so, okay? And then you want to hang this upside down. And when you hang this upside down, you can use like a, a deeper one, but this is just like a, you'd use, for example, in a pantry or in a cabinet to put your glasses on top or canned goods or whatever. It's just a little, as I said, a shorter one. I do use a taller one as well. But so uh, we're just going to hang that upside down like this um, so they would just hang. You know, if you're working in your kitchen or your dining room, you can hang them on the chandelier if you have like a hanging light fixture. Um, there's all sorts of things uh, students use. I have one student who has like when you go into hotels, the little uh, like laundry line they have in the bathtub, which is like expandable. You know, you can use, I have a student in her kitchen, she's got that and she just opens it up. So she just hangs them on the little like laundry line like you'd use in a bathroom in a hotel. So, so that's how you make the flower centers. All right. So, you know, these will give you, you know, your little flower centers like this. Um, and then we're going to move on to the buds. Now, I'm just going to show you in this uh, particular one because the, the cherry blossom uh, bonsai, we just made it a little bit simpler for everybody. That's why we're using, as I said, the little fringe and things. So we're just going to do the uh, medium and large buds, all right? So we're going to, so the small buds would be done in the same way, just using green paste, all right? So you can see here, I've got the little tiny uh, buds here. These are basically made in the softest, softest of green. We're just going to make the medium and large size, which we're going to make in pink, all right? And, uh, but of course you could totally make the small ones as well. So we do here, what we're going to do is we're going to take a one third length, 28 gauge wire, green or white. Obviously we've given you green, create a floral tape bud by wrapping, um, uh, the brown tape around, uh, three times hook times three. Okay. And, uh, we're just going to use half width tape for this. You know, again, I tried to sort of simplify the kit so it wasn't too complicated for you. Um, and, but you're going to just stretch this. So what we're going to do here is going to take your wire and we're going to make a little floral tape bud. Sydney, this battery says just 10%. Do we? Oh, on the iPad. Yeah, yeah, on the iPad, yeah. So we just have a little drama here. There we go. <laughs> so, so here we've got, as I said, so we're just going to go round your, yeah, perfect, perfect. So you're just going to go round and then you're going to go one, two, three. Okay. And then because this is a soft wire, you can just use your fingers. But what we're actually doing here is we're hooking the end of the wire like this, and then we're going to go one, two, three. All right. I mean, you could cut the, some of the brown tape in half with a pair of scissors, but as I said, the three, three, the, uh, this half width tape will work okay. All right, so that's going to be, so you're going to go three times, hook times three. And then once we've done that, we're going to use the bud mold. So remember, this is the bud molds we're going to use. And you can see they're sort of like rounded, a bit like a pumpkin shape. So these are the three we're going to use. And then these three here are the more elongated ones. But just remember in your instructions here as well, all right, so this shows the cherry buds here. So this is the small cherry bud, medium cherry bud, and then the large cherry bud there, okay? And uh, so we're going to take the, um, this. Now, when we measure these, all right, so when we measure the cherry blossom buds, we're going to use the, so come in here to the medium size there. So we're going to measure this. So it says measure a number five size ball of very pale pink. All right, so we're going to take a number five. Now, when we just did the cherry blossom flowers, we used number seven small. That means it goes through the hole. And then we also use the size guide like we were explained what it explains here, where it says here number five or number six or number nine. That means when you measure the little ball of paste, all right, you measure the little ball of paste. So about one third is below the uh, hole and two thirds above the top. All right, so you can see here, when I put this ball of paste into there, there is about one third below the hole. All right, you can see that? And then about two thirds above the top. So that is classed as a number five size. And again, you know, you can make three or four of these uh, medium sized buds. So you just would make some more balls of paste about the same size, all right? Because it doesn't matter if they're very slightly, or if you want to, you of course could totally use your size guide. And then we're going to make this. So again, you know, when you're working with the paste, remember if you, you can put a little bit of water in to start off with, but here I've added a little bit of shortening and I'm going to just make this uh, into a little tiny sausage. All right, just going to make it into like a little tiny sausage there. Um, and uh, so we're going to make this into a little uh, tiny sausage there. 
Okay, and then uh, once we've made that, it's gonna go into the uh, hole. So this is gonna go into the medium cavity. Um, so we'll go into that medium cavity, which is this is a small, this is a medium, this is a large. So you take that and you stick that down the hole. And then you're gonna take your little companion tool and you're just gonna just hollow the top of that slightly. And then you take a little bit of your glue, your egg white onto the top there, or a or pipe in gel. And then what you're gonna do here is you're gonna take that and then you're gonna push that into the paste, all right? And you're gonna just mold this around the, the bottom here. So what you do is you flex the, you, while it's in the mold, you flex it around the mold. So you see your paste will then go around the bottom of the piece. Let me just redo that, just it's got a little bit, just sometimes when you're trying to show things in camera, but just gonna pop this into the mold. So gonna pop this into the medium cavity. As I said, we're gonna put this down into here, just gonna hollow that. There we go, that's better. But also because this is quite a thin wire, everybody, when you push this in, just sort of like hold at the bottom of the wire there like so, all right? And as I said, you gotta bring this up closer to camera so you can see what's going on. So you see how you've got this little hollow into there? So you're gonna push the wire into there like so. And then while it's in the mold, so you just press it one way and you press it the other way. So this will just come out of the mold. So this will come out of the mold like this. And you're just gonna mold this around so you're just gonna mold the paste down the back of the little piece here, like so. And that's gonna give you a little bud, but you see how it has all of the detail on there? So those will be your uh, medium-sized buds. And then when we do the large bud, we're doing the same, but we're gonna make the floral tape bud just a little bit bigger. So we're gonna go for the large buds. We're gonna go five times hook times five. So we're gonna go round, and you're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. All right, you're gonna make a little hook on the top of the wire. So you go five times, then hook, and then one, two, three, four, five. And then you're gonna just tape down here like so, just about halfway down. And then this size bud, this is gonna be the large bud is gonna be number six size ball of paste, all right? So you're gonna take your size guide. So here we're gonna take a number six. So this is of course bigger. Just wanna be a number six size. So again, you have about a third below about two thirds above. Now the paste you have in the kit that has a little bit of like a lemon uh, fragrance to it. The new, my new Nicholas Lodge Flexi Paste, which as I said, you can find all that information on the nicholaslodge.in. That um, is actually got lavender and rose. So it has a very nice smell to it. It's like very much a floral sort of spa-like uh, fragrance. But you're gonna just take your paste here but it's very, um, it's very with, with it's easy to work with the paste, you know. So unlike traditional gum paste or flower paste, it doesn't dry too quickly either. So you have plenty of working time. And then again, we're gonna take the, here the large size one, all right? So this is the large cavity. So you're gonna stick your sausage down the hole there like so. And then you're just gonna hollow the middle of your sausage there. You're gonna put a little bit of your glue onto your top of your wire. And again, so you've got the little sausage into there. Just gonna push that into the middle here, like so. And then again, you're gonna flex the paste. So your paste is flexed around the, so you see by squashing the paste one way and the other way, and then you see how out comes your perfect bud. And then all we do is with your, um, with your little companion tool, your Nick stick, you're just gonna mark where those five lines are. So it actually looks like a really, uh, a real um, actual closed up bud, okay? So it has a very nice natural look. But see, they, if you made these in red, these could be like geranium buds, so you can make all different types of things uh, with those. All right, so that would be sort of how you make your little buds. But as I said, remember, this is just a, you know, obviously it's just a short live, but you can watch the full length videos on those because there's nearly four hours of video showing obviously the process of the different types of stamens and things. Now, next we're gonna move on to the, uh, the leaves, all right? So this is the leaf. So when we make the leaves, we're gonna use the cavity here. Um, this is the small leaf. This is the larger cherry leaf here, all right? So again, we're gonna pop a little tiny bit of vegetable shortening, but normally when I teach this, what I do is just put a little bit on the back of my hand. So just a minute amount. Remember, you only need to do this sort of, uh, you know, if you're making, say, 10 leaves, you only need to do this once. And we're gonna take your green paste. So this, as I said, is the foliage green color. And with your green, we're gonna take your, I've just got some little balls of paste already rolled out here for those. 
Now I'm going to show you two different ways of making the leaves because when we do the cherry bonsai, you actually don't even need to wire your leaves. You can just use the leaves like this and you can just attach those with isomol as Sydney's, uh, Sydney's going to show you. Uh, so you can just attach those a little bit of melted isomol in the tree color or you can wire these if you want to, if you want to do a little grouping. So I'll show you both techniques. So for the small leaf, we're going to take a number five size ball of green paste, roll into a sausage two thirds the length of the cavity. So you're just going to just put a little again, just condition this. You're going to roll this into a sausage and about two thirds of the cavity. All right, you're just going to press this, squash that down, and then you're going to then press uh, using cosmetic sponge. So what we're now going to do is going to press this in to the edge of the mold using your cosmetic sponge. And I said, now this one I'm going to show you just um, unwired. Okay. So that would be like just making a basic leaf. So these are great to use on, you know, cupcakes or little things that cake pops, uh, cookies and stuff where you don't want to have, obviously have a wire. And then this is the back veiner. Okay. Now all of my flower pro veiners, you see all of my uh, leaf veiners have the, for petals and leaves have this wire. This is when you put the wire in and you'll see that in a second. But this means also the back veiner, that little V shape, all right, that little notch there, you just line that up where your wire is. So if it had a wire in there, the wire would be going in here like this. And you're just going to press on the back of that with the veiner and you see how that's going to give you a beautiful veining onto the back of your leaf. So you take your leaf out of the mold. So you see you've got the beautiful veining on the front and you have the beautiful veining on the back. We're then going to take my little um, mini pad here. So I'm just going to take my little pad. Um, we have a comment from Ashlyn's Cake Cottage. She okay. said, uh, is your shop open? I need a road trip. My step-grandson moved very near you. Um, we Once we get back to Atlanta, it will be. We're open just because of COVID and filming schedules by appointment only. So, you know, if, if when, you know, she's coming down, um, you can uh, obviously on the... Um, you know, can give us a call or email to customer service and we can set up an appointment. It's always best to just cause it or let us know. But so I'm going to put this on my uh, edge of my pad and then with my Nick stick, I'm going to just sort of roll along the edge to give you the softening. So I'm holding this at an angle. And then on the front of the leaf, this is the front of the leaf there. We're going to just hollow around your companion tool, bound your Nick stick. And you're going to pinch that like a slight taco shape. So you're going to get this like little V shape. And then you just would dry these leaves in convoluted crepe foam. So they're just going to sit into, um, into the crepe foam former um, so they would dry. Now, because the, um, the sugar in original paste, which is the one that's in the kit, all right, or if you're ordering the kit will be in there, um, it doesn't ever dry hard, hard. So you can generally leave these for about, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. If you have a food dehydrator, just pop those into the food dehydrator. For about 30 minutes, they will be totally dry, okay? But unlike traditional gum paste, where it actually gets almost hard, uh, this will also, this will stay like a little bit flexible. I'm trying to, sorry. Lots of hearts. Okay. <laughs> hey, Tammy, hey, Donald. So, so and, and then when we do the, the bigger size leaf, all right, so the bigger size leaf there as the small leaves, but use number six. So when you do um, the larger leaves, this is going to be exactly the same. So we're going to make this into a sausage here. So this wants to be about two thirds of the length of the paste. See, Flower Pro, if you haven't, if you're not familiar with Flower Pro, Flower Pro is quite a unique concept. In traditional flower making, you generally use like a groove board, then you would cut out needing leaf cutters to cut out the leaf or the petal, then you'd have the veiner. This mold does everything for you. So all of the Flower Pro uh, concepts are uh, like the peony, you know, you just have the peony mold, so it has the shapes. So this is sort of basically the way you do wired petals. So again, you're just gonna press that on, and you can press this on also with the back veiner as well. And then using your cosmetic wire, wedge or your cosmetic sponge is going to press this to the edge of the cavity here like so so like yesterday we were using the bamboo so the bamboo is one we brought out in February now when we make a ridge um, you're either going to use your fingers but on something small like this normally I just take my nick stick and what I'm going to do there is I'm just going to create like a little ridge on the leaf there as you can see you have this this little tiny ridge and then you take your wire and you dip your wire into your glue or your egg white. Or as I said, for this project, you can also use piping gel. And then you're just going to take that and you see that threads into the leaf. So it just goes into the thickness of the paste. So you see it's very, very easy because your wire is going in that little channel. Okay. Then we take the back veiner. You place the back veiner on the top. Okay. Like so. And then we're just going to take your fingers, just going to press this onto the top there. So this is going to give you a back veining on your leaf. You're just going to flex your mold and you're going to take your leaf out. So again, you see how you have the beautiful detail on your leaf. 
and then we're going to take this and then this is the back of the leaf here so I'm just going to on the back of my leaf I'm just going to use my little uh, companion tool my nick stick and I'm going to soften the edge now you can also use traditional uh, flower making which is using a ball in tool but I do a lot of my leaves now with this technique and then we're going to hollow the base of the leaf again I'm just going to pinch this like a slight taco shape all right so you get that's almost like a taco shell and again this will just dry onto your um onto your crepe foam former all right so now at this stage of course you let everything dry and uh, as I said so you know probably with your blossoms probably leave those about an hour or so that will be fine uh, 30 minutes in a food dehydrator and then you're going to then put the little calyx on now when we make the calyx all right um, we're going to use for the calyx um, on this project again I'm just going to use the larger calyx for the flowers and the buds but if you watch the videos you can make the smaller calyx which would be this one so especially if you're doing the little tiny green buds those ones right at the end because you can see these are a lot smaller so that is like the small calyx size and then we have a slightly larger calyx which we use onto the flowers okay but I'm um, again, you know, so this is really up to you, but I'm just showing you the, the larger one. So what we do there is for the calyx, we're going to take a number seven ball of the green. So this green is sort of the, the pale, pale green color, really. It's not, not a really dark green color. So you can just use this. But again, you know, like you could take, um, if you wanted to make this paler, you could also take, you know, make your flowers and buds, and then you could just take the green that's left over. So this is a number seven size here. So on your flower calyx, remember this is in your leaflet, all right? You're going to take a number seven ball of green and then you're going to roll into a sausage. All right, now it doesn't matter how long your sausage is as long as it's sort of fairly uh, symmetrical. All right, and then what you'd actually do there is you just would cut this up into 12, 12 sections, all right? So you're going to cut it into half and you're going to cut each half into quarters. And then you're going to cut each of the quarters into three so this will give you 12 little tiny balls of paste all right so you keep those underneath your little pot and i'll show you this a couple of times so all we're then going to do is going to take your little so we're using the larger of the two cavities again we're just going to put a little bit of shortening into there and all i'm going to do here is i'm going to take my little piece of green paste going to pop that into there if your fingers are a little sticky, it's a little humid because obviously of the rain outside and things. But you're just going to work this into the cavity. So you see how you're just going to work this in with your Dresden tool. So just like a little bit like I showed you with here. And sorry, that I'm just going to pop that back into there. Just a little bit sticky. There we go. I'm going to pop a little cornstarch onto there if that happens. But just going to work that into the cavity here. This will be the fourth and this will be the fifth one. Do you want me to make it a little cooler? No, no, it's okay, it's okay. It's fine. Okay, and you can just, with your little companion tool, your Nick stick, you can just sort of make sure that your paste comes right into that section there. And you're just going to lift this out, all right? And you're going to pop that onto your cosmetic sponge. And then with your companion tool, you're going to just work from the outside to the inside so this is going to make the fine calyx and then you're just going to put just a little bit of glue so we're going to just put the little glue about a third of the way up the here just a little bit on the bottom there like so and then you take your flower so this is obviously the flower as you see this is a flower i made at the start of it all right so so that's like 50 minutes or so about 45 minutes ago so you see how it's still flexible but we can put the calyx on now and then we're just going to slide this up. You have your um, compact, your uh, cosmetic sponge with the hole on it. And you see how then you're just going to put that on and you're just going to just mold that around the bottom of the flower. So you're just going to take that off. So that's going to give you a little calyx on the back, you see? And you're just going to mold that around like so. And then you just would sort of let everything dry for another couple of hours and then you'll be ready for uh, the coloring. All right, which is what I'm going to show you next. So you've got plenty of paste there to make. Um, so as I said, you've got 15 grams of paste. So as I said, in the project I've done, I've used obviously for the, uh, for the, um, I've used five of the flowers and then you just make, you know, four or five buds. But if you want to make more, you've got enough there to make the nine flowers. If you wanted to make a fuller bonsai, or you even would have enough to do a sort of a, a size that Sydney's going to show you and then a little mini one as well. So if you wanted to make one as a gift, 
and just keep your paste in your bag. And this is just kept because it's a vegan product as well. Um, this is great to use for decorations on cupcakes and all different types of applications. It is vegan. And then of course you also just keep it at ambient temperature. You don't have to refrigerate this gum paste because it is starch based. It doesn't have egg white in it or anything that needs to be refrigerated. And uh, so that's how we would make the, the flowers, all right? And then I'm gonna move on to now, I'm gonna show you the coloring. Now, when we do the coloring on the uh, piece here, we're going to use, gonna take my, here, my napkin. So I've got my napkin here. Uh, there's a question from Shirley. She's asking, does this type of mold work with regular type of gum paste? Oh yes, totally. I mean, the thing is the, the Flower Pro line is developed for polymer clays, air drying clays, gum paste. You can use modeling chocolate in them, but it does work really, really well with, especially with the, as I said, the, um, you know, any of the, the, the denser paste, like the gum paste, the flower paste, my Tylo's gum paste, you know, because I have a recipe on my website as well for a scratch gum paste. Okay. And uh, so it's really uh, easy to work with. Now, so when, you, um, when you've obviously got the um, flowers and buds finished, all right, so you could, of course, take your, your flowers and your buds and uh, you can put the little calyxes on them. Now, the other thing you can do is, you know, if you wanted to uh, cut down on time a little bit as well uh, on your buds, you know, you can put the calyx on, like obviously I've shown you. The other alternative you can do is you can also just put a little bit of green dust on there. You could also use like, for example, um, if you wanted to, you could use like a green food marker pen and you could use like a little pen there and mark the calyx on. So really, as I said, that dependent on, you know, ultimately the budget, all right? So when we do cakes for friends and family, you know, how much we love them, which is sometimes not a lot. And then also if you're doing this for a client, you know, how much they're going to pay you, which unfortunately a lot of clients, you know, expect a lot for what they're going to pay you. So, so there are always ways of simplifying things, but obviously the calyx makes it look very realistic. All right. So you get this nice realistic uh, little uh, calyx on your uh, flowers. And you can see, of course, like on these ones here, you know, these have all got the uh, the little um, uh, calyx is on. Now you see the ones here that I've got, these calyxes were done a little bit paler green. So what you would do is you'd mix equal amounts of the green paste with pink or with white to make a paler green because some varieties of cherry have like almost like a plum color on the bottom of their calyx. So really again, it depends a little bit on what sort of level you want to make it to. So you can follow the directions. And as I said, if you make your flowers and buds first, you'll have pink over. You can mix that with your green to make it a little bit lighter if you wanted to. But I'm just going to do just more of a simple calyx on here. And when we color, um, you're going to take some pink. Again, this is a color called Cosmos, which is obviously Cosmos from the flower Cosmos. So you take a little bit of pink and I'm going to just dust this onto the flower petals. Okay. So you're just going to just brush from the outside to the inside. So that's like what we call source away from source. So you're going to get this slight concentration. Uh, always take your color straight from never from the pot, but also from a napkin. We're just going to put just a little bit of pink onto the edge. This just gives a really nice color. But of course, if you have a stronger pink, like, you know, you might have more of a sort of a brighter pink, just add some corn flour, corn starch to it, all right? Because the more corn starch or corn flour you add, the lighter the color will become, okay? So you're just going to put a little bit of pink onto this, and then you will also do that on the edge. But you see how you're going to get this really, really soft pink on here? And this is the color we've used on the particular bonsai we've done. This is a Nicholas Lodge color, the Cosmos. And again, I'm just, um, this week we're um, changing out, like we, I'm also doing dusting powders with sugar in. Um, so these are actually my, uh, you know, new containers. So these are the nicholaslodge.in ones. So these will be my uh, ones from sugar in. So if you go to the uh, Nicholas, uh, the nicholaslodge.in website, that is the sugar in website. And then you'll see India or Europe, UK, and then you'll also see North America because sugar in is based in um, Fresno in California. Okay, so that's where they're based. So you can ship that, have that shipped, you know, from you. And as I said, they will have they have information about the dusting powders as well. So we're going to put the pink on here, and there's 25 colors in the new series of uh, dust. So we're going to put the pink onto the edge. All right, and of course, then you could do that also on your buds and things. So when you're when you're dusting the buds, um, I'm just going to show you a flower. But when you dust the buds, you would just of course put the here like this. So you're just going to brush from the outside to the inside. Now also like sometimes my students ask me, you know, could you put the calyx on after you've dusted? All right, well, totally, you know, that's really as a set up to you, what you feel more comfortable. I'm then using a color here. This is prairie green, which is a soft green color. So we're going to take a little bit of prairie 
and I'm going to dust that into my stamens. So you can just sort of open out your stamens just so they're sort of fluffy. And I'm going to take my green and I'm going to just pop the green right into the middle of the flower there like so. So you see how I'm just dusting the green. So I'm using a round brush. So you see how then you're going to have that sort of green in the center of the stamens. I'm also going to put a little bit of green just around the base of the flower, just around the base where the calyx is. So you have a little bit of soft green just around the base where the calyx. And as I explained also here, you could just put, um, if you wanted to, you could also get away with just putting green onto the bud. And then, as I said, if you wanted to take, you could take a food art pen and you could paint that on. You could also take another alternative would be you take a little bit of the green dust and you just would add a little bit of vodka to that on a plate and you could actually paint like five little, almost like almost like a little five pointed star. OK, so it just, you know, gives you options uh, because, again, you know, it depends really, as I said, to what sort of level you want to take this to. So that's sort of like how you would do the, the flowers. All right. And then what we do, um, then we will steam them. So this is just a, a little closed steamer. And I'll bring that in when it starts steaming, but it's a little closed steamer. You can take a tea kettle, all right? So you can hold this over a tea kettle. For example, my students in Asia, or if you cook rice a lot with an electric rice cooker, you can just steam them when you're cooking dinner. You can multitask and you can use the, um, you can use your steamer. But what the steamer does, it's gonna set the powder, all right? So it almost like uh, sets this. And what this means is that then you're gonna get a nice defined color. And uh, when you use things like luster dust, again, you'll see a big difference when you, when you steam that, all right? So as I said, when we, when we have the steamer, um, so I'm just gonna, so the steamer is here, all right? So you see the steamer is there. So I'm just gonna have this out of camera so we don't fog the camera up, but we're just gonna just, just lightly steam that, all right? So just gonna steam that for a second, and that just is gonna set the color um, on the cherry blossoms. Okay, so that's going to set the color and obviously just give you a nice, uh, nice uh, defined color onto there. And uh, so that will be the coloring on the, uh, on the blossoms. And then on the leaves, all right, so here I've got, now these leaves here I dry, these ones I made earlier on today. So here I'm going to take some, uh, here I'm going to use some apple green. So this is just some brighter apple green here. And I'm going to put, and then usually I would put some gloves on there. And then also on your wired leaves, you would uh, just tape those generally down about an inch. So you just take your floral tape, you go round and you slide the floral tape up. It's always easier to start off about, you know, half an inch down. Then you slide it up and you're just going to come down about an inch and you break that off. So then what we're going to do is use in, and I said, normally if I was doing this in a, you know, class, I would put gloves on for this. But we're going to put some apple green over the surface of this. So this is the apple green, but you see the beautiful veining you get on this from that, from that mold. But this is not just for blossom leaves. You can use this for all different types of uh, leaves. And as I said, this would be the unwired one. So remember when you're doing your bonsai, you can do these leaves unwired if you want to, because you're just going to attach these with sugar. Okay. And that would also be like, if you're going to do the little Japanese maple, you could just use the little tiny, the small, medium and large Japanese maple leaves, but just do them unwired and just attach them to your tree. And that would be really stunning in the uh, fall to do that. And then I'm going to take just a little pink accent. So just like I do when I do rose leaves, I'm just going to just hit the bottom of the leaf with just a little bit of pink and this just gives a little bit of a, sort of a, almost like a defined color on the leaf so a little bit of pink uh, onto there whatever color you use on your petals you can use that onto your leaves now there's two um, there's there's obviously several ways you can give a shine onto leaves uh, the easiest way is using uh, spray uh, spray glaze all right so this is obviously what Sydney uses now just remember again I'm not doing this too close to the camera because obviously it will get onto the, the screen remember never use this in your kitchen sink or on your dining room table um, because you'll have major drama because you won't be able to get it off all right um, it is a spray uh, shellac and so we want to do it either outside in a trash can uh, in a box so generally I just use a box like this um, and just would put the leaf into a box like so all right and then you're just going to just spray this like this i'm just going to do this off of camera so just going to lightly spray this onto a napkin okay so that is that is one option all right so that's obviously going to make your leaf shiny the second option would be to use like a brush on glaze like we sell a leaf glaze which is a dilute, diluted confectioner's glaze who use a brush and you can also even use uh, for example some crisco 
So if you take a little bit of Crisco, and especially when I'm doing things like, say, doing glazed leaves onto cookies or cupcakes or, uh, you know, things that I'm really purposely going to eat, all right, I actually use, always use Crisco. So you just brush over the top of the leaf with a little bit of Crisco like this, and this is going to make the leaf shiny, okay? But as I said, so that's a really good way because it doesn't have any taste to it. The Crisco, you can use solid coconut oil as well. So that's just giving you a couple of different options. But generally, if you're making the like the bonsai, of course, if you're making this for somebody to keep, I would recommend the spray lacquer or as I said, the brush on glaze because obviously that's going to be permanent. The Crisco is more of a short term fix, but as I said it works really well when you're doing, you know, little leaves like in pastry when we make entremet style cakes or petit gâteau and things like that. A lot of times when I'm doing uh, demonstrations or articles or magazines, I'll often use Crisco because it's something everybody has. Um, and as I said, when you're doing something you're going to eat, it makes it really quick to do as well. So when we, uh, once you've got your um, components together, you're then going to obviously just wire those uh, together into little sprays. Okay, so you would put in your, now when you attach the flowers, all right, you can do these in little florets. So think of it like cauliflower or broccoli. You can do these in little florets. So you can see here, I've got like three florets here. I've got like two buds. And then this one here has got like, you see, I've got an open and a closed flower. And also remember, you can close the flowers up a little bit and then two leaves. And then this is a larger grouping. And that would be like if you're doing branches of cherry. But on our bonsai, okay, because it's not a huge project, I'm just doing either, you know, like a flower or a flower and a bud or two buds in little groupings like this. But you see, if you, if you put those in, because they're going to go in quite tight, you know, even if you don't have a calyx on everything, it's not really going to notice, all right? And then you can add some little leaves to this. So you're just going to put everything very sort of close together like this. You see how so everything would sort of sit close together like so. So just because of time, because obviously Sydney's got to show her part. And um, I'm just, uh, as I said, just, just put the calyx on the flower. But you're just going to trim down like this. And then with the particular project we're doing, you're going to cut these quite short. Okay, so you want to tape down here. So you want to cut these to between sort of quarter and a half an inch long where they group together, okay? And then also you can use buds separately. And as I said, you can also have the leaves unwired, all right? So if you'd rather do the leaves unwired, because actually on the finished little uh, bonsai we showed you at the beginning, we have a couple of the, um, there where we just use single leaves, all right? So that's a really good way to do that. But as I explained, like for Japanese maple, I would probably do them all unwired and just attach them to your isomol. Um, so that's sort of like the basis of your, your blossoms, okay? Um, and uh, so really easy to do. And uh, But you can see how like in the finished blossoms here, like as I said on the plum, the plum you see that's got like semolina or cornmeal on it, and those are made in pink thread. And then like when you do apple blossoms, the apple blossom ones here, these were made uh, with green thread, and then I've got yellow uh, semolina or cornmeal. Because, you know, obviously we're doing these more of a specimen piece, we're going for that little bit more detail. But of course you could also on your, um, also here on your plum as well, you could dust a little bit of pink on your stamens. Now if you're going to do that, it's easiest to do that before you actually uh, make the flower. Okay, so I'll just show you that technique. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to do say like pink on your stamens, what I'd actually do is I'd do them before you fluff them. So you'd actually put a little bit of pink like on the edge of your stamens like this. You do that the other side as well. You see then what I would do is then you'd fluff these out. But you see how then you're going to get the pale pink on the edges there, you see? But it's easier to do that because if you do that afterwards, when you're trying to do that, they're quite soft. So what you'd end up getting a lot of pink in on your flower petals. And then of course, then you would put a little bit of your green. So you take a little bit of your green there in the center and you just put a little bit of green in the middle there, like so. And you see how you've got now another sort of like contrast color on your edge. So it really is, is sort of ultimately up to you how you want to, uh, to finish these off, okay? So, so, so that is our, um, as I said, our cherry blossoms, our little buds, and um, our leaves, all right? Yay. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, so, so what I'm going to do next is um, um, Sydney's just going to chat a little bit about the isomer. I'm just going to clear my, um, obviously, things off of this station. And then uh, Sydney's going to come in and show you how to do the base and the actual tree of the bonsai. And then we're going to come back and we're going to finish off showing you how you attach those decorations to it, okay? Yep. Sorry. Alright, wasn't that awesome guys? What did you guys think? Did you see it?
Lexi using those for so many different projects. Thank you very much. All right, so I'm gonna mic myself up really quick here and then I will Oops, switch. Me. Nope, you're good. <laughs> there you go. All right, here. Fantastic, you're getting lots of hearts. Everybody posted yeah. yeah. I know I haven't been on Facebook very much, so I haven't gotten to write to everybody. But oh my gosh, they're absolutely incredible from our Zoom class yesterday. Seeing all the pictures. Uh, make sure if you guys want to see the pictures uh, to join the See Me Torch team if you're not already. Uh, the See Me Torch team is a uh, Facebook group. It's totally free and it is just all things ice malt and lots of other stuff too. We have uh, guests uh, live streams and things, and we also do giveaways and uh, games and things like that. But after all of the classes and like the Zoom class that we did uh, a collaboration class yesterday, everybody's been posting their photos of their pieces and it's so much fun to see and get inspiration from each other um, so yeah uh, definitely check that out if you're not a part of it it's totally free to join and uh, you can either send me a message and I'll send you a link or you can just search for the see me torch team and uh, you will be able to find it uh, but yeah so while we are just transferring over all of our stuff I was just going to talk a little bit about ice malt um, if you are new to ice malt if you're not as familiar with it so the ice malt that we're going to be using today is my see me pre-cooked ice malt tiles so you can see that these are already pre-cooked and ready to go so it's going to make it super duper easy all you have to do is melt them down so if you've worked with ice malt in like the powder form or you've seen the ice malt crystals those do have to be tempered so that's a raw form of ice malt. They have to be templar, tempered similar to chocolate, so you have to go through a specific recipe. That recipe that I use is listed for free on my website, seemecakes.com, which you can see down here, <laughs> over here. And um, so you can check that out if you are interested in learning about cooking it from scratch. But uh, when it's already pre-cooked like this, it just makes it super easy because it does not need to be tempered. All you do is melt it down. So when we have it in the tile form, whether you temper it yourself and turn it into the hard candy, or you get it pre-cooked uh, like my seamy ice malt tiles here, all you have to do is melt it down in the microwave for about 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals until it is a liquid so super duper easy you do have to be careful I highly recommend wearing gloves because it is hot so make sure that you are uh, protecting your hands with a cotton glove and then a nitrile or latex glove over that is going to be the best to protect your hands from the heat um, but you know as long as you're being cautious paying attention you're used to working with heat if you make cakes and you cook so you're working with fire and ovens all the time um, same rules apply just be careful wear your gloves and everything will be good um, so yeah I'm not gonna wear the gloves today so don't follow my bad example Example. Um, it's only because I've been doing this for about 14 years and my hands have no heat sensitivity left in them so um, I highly recommend wearing the gloves when working with it but um, yeah that's what we're gonna do today is melt it down in the microwave for 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals okay so I'm gonna switch the camera back down now here we have our uh, setup going and I'm just going to set up some of my stuff here that we can start with so uh, for the bonsai cherry blossom we are going to be making the base. We're going to be making the branches and the tree. So I'll show you here. So we have the base that's going to be ice malt, all of the rocks. I'm going to show you what I do for my uh, moss and grass under here. And of course, I'm also going to show you the beautiful tree trunk with all of those branches and striations. Uh, and then we will have, uh, Nicholas will come back on and we will put it all together. So what we're going to do is we are going to preheat our ice malt. I have it warming a little bit, but it just got a little bit cool. Um, since before the live started so we're just going to pop that back into the microwave again 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals I am going to be setting up my heat lamp for this you don't have to have the heat lamp if you don't have one it's okay it'll just take a little bit longer so for demo purposes I'm gonna set up my heat lamp I do have a whole YouTube video on how I set up my heat lamp and what um, heights I use and building the stand and everything for it, but it's a 250 watt bulb, so it's going to be very, very uh, warm and it's going to keep the ice melt nice while you're working with it. So I'm just going to set that up off to the side. I am going to zoom the camera in just slightly so that the light doesn't throw it off too much. So let me do that here. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. And so that's just going to keep the ice malt warm when we're working with the branches. And it just saves a little bit of time compared to having to reheat your ice malt, which you absolutely can do. But just in a demonstration setting, it's just going to be a little bit quicker to have that all preheated. So you'll see the light go on there, but we still, yeah, we should be able to see fine. All right, so let's see what we're doing first. Grab some of my tools. Scissors, silicone tools, spatulas, all that fun stuff. 
All right, so uh, I'm preheating my ice malt, like I said, in the microwave until it comes to a boil. So you wanna bring the ice malt to a boil so it's going to be nice and hot, and that way it also brings out any air that may have been in the ice malt, either just between pieces as it melts down, it may catch little air pockets, or it could be, um, you know, from stirring in color and things like that. So it's important to bring the ice malt to a nice boil, and then we're gonna let it settle once it comes out, which I'll show you once it comes to a boil, we let all of the bubbles settle themselves, so we're left with nice clear ice malt. Um, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna pour the base since that'll take the longest to cool and then we'll make all of our pieces while that's cooling. And so I have my mold here. This is of course one of my Simi molds. And so this is going to be, uh, it could be used for a coaster, it can be used for a tray or a frame even, like a picture frame, a nice smooth kind of contemporary frame. You can use this for lots of different things. Um, so this is what I'm going to use. We actually used this when we did our last Cake Flicks collaboration. Um, Chef Nicholas and I made a uh, lemon drop themed <laughs> piece, a cake and a uh, glass and all of that which is still available to watch um, and you can use that as a beautiful coaster it fits in there um, but I'm gonna be using it kind of as like a base like a tray to set our cherry blossom into because it will fit perfectly into the bottom so since this is a silicone mold you don't have to worry about um, greasing it or powdering it or anything like that all right I've brought my ice malt to a boil here and so you can see it is bubbling really really nicely and now I'm just going to let that settle. So I'm just gonna let the ice melt stop boiling at room temperature, and that is just gonna make sure that all of the air is out. Now, structurally, that's not gonna affect too much. It's mo more so visually, and as you can see with this ice melt, it's actually not clear, because I added in some colors. So if you got the accessory kit with this project, um, you definitely uh, will already have it pre-colored, so you don't have to worry about it. But to get the colors, it's very easy. You can either use a, a liquid airbrush color, so that's gonna be a water or alcohol-based color, or you can use a powdered color, which is what I used, to get the opaque finish. So it's going to have the opaque finish if you use powders like puddle dust and luster dust. If you use airbrush colors, it's going to have a transparent finish. You never ever want to mix in gel color though. Gel color is going to break down the ice malt and it's not going to dry properly or harden properly. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Sandra Frieza. She, uh, while Nicholas was demonstrating, uh, ordered one of the kits. So there's only one more kit that is readily available um, for the accessory kits that go with these. Again, they are going to be available again after about a week or so um, once Nicholas gets back. But um, you definitely uh, want to snag that last one while it's still there because that one will go out sooner. Kim wanted to know, will this be available for replay? She fell a little behind on the flowers. Yes, definitely. This will be available for replay as soon as we are done. It will save it and it'll be posted onto our pages. And I also post all of the live streams to our Facebook, or our YouTube page as well. So if you just search my name, Sydney Galpern, on, face on YouTube, um, all of those are on there. So this one will be up there in the next few days. And Deborah Coughlin would like to know what brand of dust do you like? Uh, the d brand of dust that I like is the Sugar Art. So um, they are super ground, super fine. So not only do they paint really nicely, but they mix in really nice. Okay, so perfect. But you can use any kind of dust, absolutely. You can use um, the dust that Chef Nicholas has. Those are gonna be really, really fine um, for dusting onto flowers and everything. As you can see, they dusted on so beautifully. Um, you can mix those in and those are going to be perfect. Again, those powders are gonna give you the beautiful opac opaque finish for the opacity of this piece. And it's gonna really, really make it pop, almost look like porcelain um, and make them really bright and um, just really, really kind of vibrant. Okay, so see how I'm just letting that settle. I don't want to pour it when it's boiling because I don't want to pour any of the pieces, uh, or the ice melt in when it is boiling. Uh, you don't want any of the ice melt to be too hot and you don't want to get any of those air bubbles trapped. So we're just waiting for that to settle before we pour it. And I'm also preheating my other color too, my bronze. Um, so this, with the accessory kit for this project, it's actually a transparent brown because it would look very beautiful in a transparent brown if you were going for a little bit more of a realistic look. Um, since we were going for more, you know, of an artistic look and we wanted that really pretty shimmer into it, I do mix in the gold into the brown to create like a bronze. All right, so um, that is going to be our color. I'm just preheating the other one. Take another 30 seconds or so. All right, so all we're gonna do is we are gonna fill this up with the um, ice malt and then we're going to let this cool. So you can see that the bubbles have subsided a lot. I'm gonna give it like one more minute and then we will continue. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in now since the bubbles have pretty much stopped. There may be one or two rogue ones stuck to the bowl or just sitting on the surface, but they're not actively moving and uh, bubbling anymore. So I'm just gonna go ahead. Sometimes you'll get a few stray bubbles from pouring, but they should boil themselves out. Just like that. 
and then we'll go ahead and let this cool. So I do wait about a minute or two before I torch any final bubbles away. Uh, hot air rises, so if there were any bubbles that just poured into it or um, you know just kind of got trapped, they will rise to the surface after about a minute and I will be able to torch all of those away. And then we will let that cool at room temperature for about 20 minutes or so. Michelle would like to know if you have to reheat the blue, does it change colors? like the clear does when you have to reheat it a couple times? No, um, with my ice mulch, it is going to stay the same color. The only time that it could change color a little bit is if you're using an opaque color that you colored yourself. Sometimes the white cannot br uh, may not have been broken up if you didn't heat it and stir it a few times from mixing in the white powdered color. Um, and sometimes it can turn a little bit lighter the more and more you heat it. Um, but the only reason that it's really gonna change color or that a clear color would change color is if it's burnt. So if you're having problems with your ice mulch changing colors from heating it again, I would say that um, it's most likely that you're just heating a little bit too much or you may have to subtract some of the um, intervals that you do. So instead of 30 seconds, maybe do 15 if your microwave is a little bit stronger. Okay, so see how there's only one or two bubbles that are sitting across the top? I'm just going to lightly torch those. Again, this is opaque, so it's really you're not going to see them on the bottom, but I am just a perfectionist, so I'm going to go ahead and pop those. And then I'll put this off to the side again for about 20 minutes or so until that cools down and then we'll pop it out for our base. Okay, so that is casting, that's pouring into molds, letting it cool. Next we're going to be pulling. So pulling, of course, is the process of getting it from a liquid into more of a solid finish. So this is my beautiful bronze color. Again, the brown from the accessory kit is going to, I added in a little bit of gold luster dust. That is just going to give it a little bit more opacity and also that shimmer when we twist up the branches really, really reflects beautifully. So uh, I added in the gold, but I didn't want to put the bronze in uh, in case you wanted to leave it a little bit more translucent and make it more like glass. I wanted you to have that option. And since uh, gold luster dust is a really common color for everyone to have, um, I figured that that would give you guys that option rather than doing it pre-colored. Um, but what we're going to do is I'm going to grab a silicone mat. I am working on a silicone mat, a silpat mat, but for pulling I like to work on the more flexible mats because they release a little easier and they don't have the texture of the silpat mats do. So I'm just going to be pu pulling onto this. So again, I am letting my ice melt settle so that it's not actively bo boiling anymore. You can see that absolutely beautiful shimmer color and you'll see that when I pour it out here in a second too. But what we're going to do is just pour out a puddle. I'm going to pretty much pour all of what I have here and if you don't feel comfortable pulling all of it at once um, if you're newer to pulling you absolutely can do sections and then just combine them under the lamp okay so see how I just poured that out right onto the mat and now we're gonna start folding very slowly and the goal to this is we're cooling it down so we're folding in cool air and we're thickening it and pulling it all together so kind of like dough once this is ready it will all come together into a ball and it will stop sticking now, silicone does have pores like skin, so you do want to be careful that you're not um, insulating too much heat onto the mat. So you want to make sure that as you're folding, you're also moving it around. So after maybe four or five folds, I'm going to move over and I'm just going to press in a different spot and fold and fold and fold. And that's going to help it because uh, the pores can open up from too much heat. So whether maybe there was a hot spot from your microwave or maybe you just uh, insulated a little too much heat with the kind of counter that you're on, it can actually stick, the uh, ice mold can stick to the mat from just kind of getting caught deep down in those pores that have opened up too wide from too much heat, if that makes sense. If that does happen, it's not a big deal. You can still use the ice mold uh, that is left over. So I just remove as much as I can once it's ready to release. And that one little stuck spot, all you have to do is rinse it in some water and it jumps right off. Usually it doesn't stick in the same spot twice, it's just about the pores and if you had a space that may have been insulated. Um, that is another reason why I like to use a double mat, so I'm still keeping the silpat mat underneath. So now that it's cooling a little bit uh, more, I can go faster, so I am going to start ripping this back a little bit quicker and that's going to st start to help it to pull together. I'm moving it to a cool spot, so I'm just going right out the light. Um, they would like to know, uh, do you introduce bubbles uh, between the folding? Yes, what you're doing is basically mixing in bubbles, which seems counterintuitive with ice melt because you usually want it to be crystal clear. But the look of pulled ice melt is to have those beautiful bubbles, those streaks and striations and twists of bubbles in the air in it. So we are folding in cool air. So it's important to make sure as you're folding that you're folding it end to end. So I'm not just flipping this over, um, I'm folding it so that one end meets the other side and then pulling it back. And you see how now that it's thickening, I can pull back a little bit faster. Okay, 
and it's releasing. And so I know it's ready once it is. Stop sticking to the mat. All right. Okay, so again, I recommend gloved hands for this, but you can go ahead and pick it up. And you see how it's releasing now. All right, so I am going to pull this a little bit. This is where the name pulled sugar or pulled ice milk comes from, is I'm just stretching and folding it to uh, again incorporate more of those bubbles and more air. That's cooling it down and hardening the texture. If it's too soft and pliable, it definitely can um, be a little bit frustrating to work with because it's not going to hold any shape that you sculpt with. So the key is really to fold it to the texture that you like. So make sure that you're cooling it and cooling it until it feels like a texture that's going to hold its shape but is still quite pliable. It really just takes trying it a few times and get, kind of practicing to make sure that you get that sort of happy medium between uh, not over pulled that it's rock hard but not under pulled that it's too pliable. And this is really where we're going to start sculpting all of our pieces. So our rocks, our tree, everything. Okay. Perfect. So now I can see when I kind of shape my ice mold, it's holding its shape a lot better. It's not just immediately turning into a blob like it was before, but it is still quite pliable that I'm going to be able to manipulate it and shape it and everything. So I'm going to put that underneath my heat lamp. Again, that is a 250 watt bulb. Um, now I do have a YouTube series of ice mold basics. So if you're new to ice mold and you want to kind of get a really good groundwork, I do have a YouTube series on my Simi ice mold basics. It has everything from um, what ice mold is, how you temper it, um, and all that, you know, how I temper it and things like that um, is coming. So it's just kind of like a basic uh, how to make bubbles, how to pull, things like that. So if you're interested in that, it's just under my name, Sydney Galpern. And of course, like I said, the Torch team is really great for that too because there's lots of tutorials and things like that. So um, I just threw that underneath my lamp and I uh, can basically just keep it there as long as I want to and that will keep it nice and pliable. And if you did not have the lamp, uh, what you can do is you can actually just take your mat and you can fold the ice melt onto the mat. So I actually set it in the center, I fold this over, and I will put that in the microwave for only five second intervals at a time, kind of pushing it through the mat to feel it, to get it more and more pliable, and that just reanimates it a little bit and will definitely help to um, get it all nice and pliable again without having to start from scratch. Okay, so for the tree, what we're going to do now is we're just going to freeform it. This is one of those things that can be very natural. You can do lots of different styles and kind of tweak this in different ways. But uh, we're going to just go ahead and start with a piece and then we'll build off of it. So no worries about it being a certain size or anything like that. You can kind of customize this. We just want something that's going to fit nicely into our, um, our base. Okay, so what we're going to do is I just cut a piece off here and now I'm going to start stretching it. So I'm rolling and stretching. The more that you touch and the more that you roll and sculpt with the ice mold and it's out of the lamp, it's going to be hardening and cooling. So speed is a good practice for this. You want to make sure that you're not going too slow with it, which of course just comes with building your confidence and practicing. Okay, see how I'm kind of cutting some branches off of here to start with, but they're not going to look like this in the finished piece. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to start twisting it. So normally you don't twist pulled ice malt because you don't want the striations to be all kind of twisted and crazy, but for this, it's actually going to lend itself really nicely. So I'm starting to twist, and at the same time I'm shaping, so I'm not leaving it laying down on one side too long, I'm moving it around a lot to make sure that it's all going to uh, be round. Okay, I'm just doing some little tiny branches coming off of it at first, and then we can add on branches later. I'm going to just kind of push down the base to give it a really nice grounded um, set base for it. And then of course you can shape it however you want. So if you want to lean all the branches kind of folding one way, uh, depending on kind of the orientation of your uh, piece and your project that you're doing, you can change it up. Okay, so I'm just going to start. Bonsais tend to have very, uh, it depends on the, you know, the type of plant that is the bonsai, but they tend to have very um, kind of fluid uh, trunks. They have a lot of movement to them. So you see how I'm kind of twisting it. You can set it on a form if you want to, um, but I usually don't want to risk it sticking. So I just like to do it by hand and I have my little fan set up here to help to cool it down as I go. So I'm just kind of tweaking and shaping. And I can see progressively that it's cooling more. So it still is bending a little, but not as much as when I first started. So that's good. 
And this is really just a base to work off of, and then we can add as many branches as we want. So uh, another idea for these, other than the cherry blossoms, they make really, really good uh, kind of spooky trees if you did them a little darker for like Halloween. They also would make, be really pretty, I think, for like a Snow White theme or a princess theme if you did them in white or in pearlized ice malt would be really, really pretty as well. So um, there's just different options, you know, for different styles. Uh, and of course you could do really pretty, just natural, you know, regular trees with pretty green leaves, um, you know, for like outdoorsy and, um, you know, nature inspired cakes and projects. Okay, so see how I'm just rotating this and cooling it. Okay, right now it's a little bit more of a haunted tree, so we're going to add on some branches so it looks a little bit more full. And that will give us a lot of surface area to attach on those beautiful cherry blossoms. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. It still has a little bit more to cool, but I'm going to just let the fan kind of blow over it while I make my additional branches. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this a couple times since it melted a little bit under the lamp, but you don't have to pull it every single time. It's just really about texture. So if you pick it up and the ice melt feels okay, you can just go ahead and start with shaping it. Okay, now I'm just going to pull individual branches. So see how I'm just stretching? Normally, if you're going to make a tube, you would roll it out, right? But with ice malt, you don't want to risk it getting too cool before you start to shape it. And by rolling it, that's a lot of kind of manipulating and your hands are actually cooling it down. So we're just going to stretch it out and then I'm twisting it to get in all those striations. The more you twist it, the more kind of gnarly it will get and it'll get lots and lots of texture. Or of course, you can leave it a little bit more natural. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of figure out where I want to attach my branch. And because both pieces are warm, I can just go ahead and put it on. I don't have to torch it. But if it wasn't wanting to stick, I definitely can torch it a little bit to help. All right. And then the nice part about these is because they have so much texture, you really can't even tell where the two went together, that there's a seam. Uh, if it did bother you a little bit, you can zap it with the torch and use like a silicone tool to smooth that out but I'm not even gonna worry about it because it all just kind of pulls together at the end. Plus we're covering this up a lot with some of the um, grass and moss and then some of the, of course, uh, buds and flowers and leaves and everything. Okay, so just cooling that into place. You can see it's already holding its shape pretty well, but you do have a good amount of time to kind of work with it. With our ice malt, we make sure that it's going to be as pliable as possible so that you're gonna have a lot of time to work with it and it's going to be really flexible and give you lots of time to kind of tweak it and perfect it before it cools down. All right, so again, just twisting. If the tip of your branch is not quite sharp enough um, for what you want, if it looks a little bit dull, you can cut the end with scissors at an angle like a flower stem, and you see how that just comes to a beautiful sharp point. Okay, sometimes I even pre-cool the branches a little bit before I put them on if I want to just keep it um, a little bit more solid if I kind of know what shape I want it to go in. And then I will just keep adding, maybe add one more here towards the bottom. So that's what we got so far. And these are just really creative and free form. You can really add your own artistic touch and your own personality into them because you can, of course, have them leaning all one way. You can go a little bit more like Nightmare Before Christmas and you can curl the ends of the trees and make them kind of coiled. That would be super fun and whimsical. There's just so, so, so many different ways that you can go about these. I love these trees because you can put birds up in them. You know, you can put little, um, you know, molded birds or hand sculpted birds, even in different mediums, as you'll see with the paste, it's going to attach beautifully to the ice malt. You can really mix and match different mediums. If you're a piper, you can pipe them. And then once they dry, you can attach them on out of royal icing or chocolate. It gives you lots and lots of options of how to combine it. Um, the reason, too, that I love ice malt trees, uh, not only just because they're so beautiful and so quick, but you don't need to put a support in them. So for something of this size, you don't need to put any sort of wire or um, you know skewer or dowel system or anything inside of it because it's going to be really strong. It's going to hold itself up. We are going to glaze these with a clear edible glaze spray, just like Chef Nick used um, on his flowers, and that is just going to make sure that it's all going to uh, be sealed from the humidity and the moisture in the air, and it's going to keep it really nice and shiny uh, it won't get sticky or cloudy for weeks even for months even here in Florida where it is super rainy um, it has been raining off and on all day here and all of our pieces will stay nice and shiny as long as I spray them with the glaze as soon as they are cool
All right, so there is our tree base. I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm going to stop there. But of course, it's personal preference if you want to keep adding more and more, or if you want to kind of leave it a little bit more simple. Um, again, like Nicholas was saying, you have different levels depending on how much you want to put into it, so you can stop whenever you like, or you can keep filling it out and making tiny little twigs and things for the tips of the branches. Okay, uh, I want to leave it pretty simple because I want lots of room for the flowers. Uh, we do have a little bit of extra ice malt, so what we're going to do with that is we're going to make our rocks, and the rocks are just going to going to be basically little pebbles like you would have in the bottom of a planter and those are going to go into the base of the piece. So um, I'm going to move the coaster out of the way here too because it was near the lamp so I want to make sure it's going to cool nicely. So I'm just going to cool, put it to a cool spot on the back table here and that's going to help it to cool down as well. We'll leave our little fan on it. All right, and so now what we're going to do is just cut off pieces. Rocks are one of the hard things to make because we always overthink them, right? We want them to look natural and all different, but we want them to look perfectly natural. So um, I'm telling myself as much as you guys, we have to kind of let go a little bit and just make them all sorts of different shapes, all sorts of different sizes. Not worry if they're perfect because rocks in reality are not perfect. So I am just basically cutting off little pieces, okay? And I don't really roll them with my hands because, again, that will cool them a lot and it could cool them before I can actually add any shape in. What I do do for this is I want them to kind of look like um, pebbles or like skipping stones. So I press on the outsides and kind of push the edges down. So the top is still domed, but the outsides are falling downwards a little bit. And because we're putting in the grass in between them, it's going to kind of help to um, pull everything together and just make it look really realistic like it's sort of disappearing underneath. Michelle would like to know, do you recommend a specific type of heat lamp? Is it possible just to buy a 250 watt light bulb and make your own box? Yes, um, that's what I do is I buy the 250 watt bulb and then you can get, usually in the same um, store, you can get a hood for it. So it's just like a metal hood. Uh, it's a 250 watt rated hood. Um, I could probably move this over so that you can kind of see what I'm using. So I have the metal hood right here. I don't want to touch it because it's hot and pull it off, but um, I just hang it. You can clip it to your overhead cabinet if you want. I hang it on a little stand that I built out of PVC. I do have a whole uh, YouTube video of creating the stand and how high I do it and what kind of lamp I use and everything, but the lamps I get are just from like Walmart. You can get them at hardware stores. You can get them at like um, pet supply stores a lot of the times. Um, it's just for like reptiles and chickens, but it's a very a lot hotter of a bulb. So that's the part that you got to make sure the hood is rated for so that it will hold that hot of a bulb. Yeah, the, the 250 watt heat lamp. Yeah, 250 watt heat lamp bulb. Not, um, the clear is best. Yeah, I like to use the clear bulb rather than the uh, red one because you can see the colors better of the project you're doing. Plus, um, they also have ceramic ones, but the ceramic ones I find don't get hot enough. So I like the clear glass ones if you can find them. And uh, they're very inexpensive. I think at Walmart it's under 15 bucks for the bulb and the hood combined. So, okay, so see how I'm just making a variety of different sized little pebbles. I'll make some little ones to stack, some bigger ones. All right, make a couple more little ones while we are. Um, waiting for our coaster to cool, our little frame. All right. These would be pretty to do in different colors too. You know, if you wanted to add even more color into this, you can add in, you know, some really pretty reds or even go fantasy with it and do like blues and greens. You can also get like the pre-made pebbles uh, and like candy rocks. That would eliminate a whole step. Uh, I like these just because I'm going to be able to texture them and paint them nicely, but those are already painted, so you can use stuff, um, you know, already. Uh, made and that will take out some of your time of your project. So again, just different levels depending on what's going to work best for you and your project. Okay, and I'll make maybe one or two bigger pebbles just to have a lot of different options for when I fill in the tray. And of course you can wait till the tray is cool and then actually make them and attach them in one by one if you really want to fill it up perfectly and make sure that each one is contoured to the exact shape of the tray and around the tree. All right, but you see they're really not taking very long. We're just cutting pieces off, smushing them into shape so they don't have any pointy spots and they look vaguely rock-like. These are going to be covered up a lot with some moss and some painting, so. All right. 
There we go, and I have one more big piece left, so I'm gonna make maybe two larger rocks. Okay. Perfect. Anybody have any questions? Remember, you can write them in the chat. We are keeping an eye on it, in case anybody has any. All right. Perfect, so I'll let those cool, of course, before we um, do anything with them. We wanna make sure that they are nice and solid. Now I'm gonna grab my coaster back out. Um, it's always important to make sure with these pieces that you are um, tapping them to make sure that they are completely solid. Okay, so I'm just tapping it with a tool or with a toothpick, not with your finger, just in case it was still um, a little bit too warm to make sure it's not making a dent or anything. Okay, it's still a tiny bit on the warm side, but we should be able to use it. There we go. So I'm just flexing the mold just like that. <laughs> I rushed it a little bit, but it'll cool faster now that it's out of the mold. So I'll just flatten that back out. All right, and that is our beautiful tray. It's gonna contrast that bright blue really, really nicely with the bright, um, or the dark color of the tree and of the rocks. And then once we paint a little bit with the green and moss and everything. So you can see, um, if you can, I don't know if you can see it from that far away, but let me hold it up a little bit so that you can tell. There's a little bit of like a bubbly texture on the surface. That's just going to be from the silicone. It naturally, like I said, it has pores, it breathes um, when it comes in contact with the heat. So sometimes silicone molds can have that little bit of a bubbly surface. You can leave that. if you you like it because it kind of has a cool frosted look but we are going to go ahead and we are going to melt those away so when something is solid like this it is very easy to melt away those bubbles by just um, torching it over the surface smoothing it out and melting away any of those bubbles that kind of fills itself in so what we're going to do is just grab our torch and i'm just going to give it a light torching i'm really mostly going to focus on the outside because you're not going to see the middle when we put in all of the grass and everything so we don't need to spend the time to take those away unless of course you were gonna see that. So I'm mostly just focusing on the outer ring. It's important to cool that in between layers. So you can, if you don't have a little fan, you can just use your um, room temperature or you can put it in a spot that maybe has a draft if you have a table uh, in, you know, in your kitchen or wherever you're working that has a little bit of a draft, you can set it there to help cool it down. And that's just gonna make sure that you don't accidentally melt that inner rim because eventually if the ice mold gets too hot, it will just melt and bleed together. It turns back to liquid. So we wanna make sure that we are cooling it, but that's just going to melt away the surface. This is just a little battery operated fan. Um, I think that uh, they have these a lot in Florida because of hurricane preparedness. So my original one I actually took out of our hurricane box, but I replaced it, don't worry. Um, and these are just little battery operated fans, but you can get these on Amazon. and pretty much any um, store that has uh, like camping supplies and things. Okay, so I'll just do... Oh yeah, that would work good. <laughs> that would be perfect, yeah. And you can get ones that clamp too and you can kind of bend it around. All right, so that was my last torching and I'll show you the difference once it's cool of the outside smoothness compared to the center that was not torched. It really does make a big difference in how reflective it is. Okay. There we go, so I'll hold that up. So let me catch the light right. You see how the outside is nice and smooth. The inside just barely got it at the edges, but I'm gonna leave that since we're really not gonna see it. But of course for your project, if you were gonna see that more, you absolutely can um, use the torch to clear it all up and make it super clear and glossy. And if you were doing this in a transparent color, it definitely also would make this super duper transparent. It would look just like real glass, which is an awesome sort of way to do this is to make it look like a glass sculpture. That's again why I left the brown without the gold in it and it's up to you if you wanted to put the gold in. Okay, so um, we are done with the lamp. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off and move it so I have some room to uh, paint. I'm gonna get my paints ready and that'll also help to just make sure as we're assembling that it's not going to keep any of our pieces warm or accidentally warm them back up. So we will just move that out of the way. Thank you very much. All right. And I'm gonna grab some paints while these are finishing up. So I'm gonna be using some gel colors after we put this together to add in a little bit of paint. So I use Artisan Accents gel color, and I'm gonna thin that down with some dilution solution. You can use water um, to thin them down as well, but I really like the dilution solution because it's paints on really smooth. It basically turns your gel colors into airbrush colors or paint. Uh, and then for the moss and the uh, kind of grass around the bottom, I am using my special 
mixture here. Uh, this is my own uh, recipe for making mosses and things like that. I have a couple different ones depending on the finish that I want, if I want them like shinier or smoother or things like that. But for moss, what I really like to do is I use Ritz crackers and I br uh, blend them in a food processor with some green petal dust. So I just mix those together and process it until it is uh, all powdery and you can see it still has a little bit of variegation because there's some pieces in there that didn't quite cover with the green so they have it has like some yellow specks which I really like it just adds some texture to it and uh, I like doing it with the crackers because it's really buttery and smooth and so it attaches on nicely it looks very velvety and it's also very inexpensive and you probably already have some sort of crackers in your uh, cabinet so you can use really any color um, or anything to get different effects but I like the Ritz crackers because they are kind of a um, bland color they're very just like an ivory so you can add in a lot of different colors on top all right so this is nice and cool now our tree is nice and cool so we'll be able to go ahead and put that together all right I'm just going to go ahead and use the um, torch to put everything together but you could use liquid ice melt if you prefer to dip and stick Okay, so all I'm going to do is set this down, don't hold things and torch them okay <laughs> and then I'm going to heat both because warm sticks to warm better than warm to cool and I'm heating really really well so while I melted a little bit of the ice melt down that's good that means it's gonna grab it nicely and I'm just gonna stick that right into the middle okay and it dries very strong as soon as you stick it it is stuck so keep that in mind kind of plan where you want it first and know exactly where you're going before you stick it down because you can't take it off but that's a good thing right because it is really cemented on there it's not gonna come apart on its own um, so we are going to let that cool and then while that's cooling, we will add in our rocks. So the rocks are so lightweight, you don't have to torch the rock. Also because it'd be kind of hard to pick it up right after you blow torched it since it's so small. So I'm just going to heat the base. And then I am going to stick the rocks down. So just a little bit of heat. And I'm not worrying about covering in all of the blue because we are going to add in that moss. So I want some cracks and crevices for it to sit to have a really nice realistic look. And again, you can do different types of mediums for this if you want to. Okay, so I start with the bigger ones just to fill in space. And then I will go through and fill in with the tinier ones after that. So I'm pretty much just going to the inside of the rim. Okay. Kind of piling them on top of each other as well. Just filling that all in and again we'll fill in all of the gaps and crevices with the moss in a second all right perfect Whoop. put a new one there <laughs> I didn't like that one anyway all right so there we go I'm gonna hold that up so it looks more like a cherry blossom than a blob from that angle there we go so see how I did leave some blue gaps like I said so that we can fill that with a really pretty moss even like that though is still really nice you could leave it like that you could even pour in a different color into the center of the piece after it's cool you could just fill that in with liquid ice malt and make a flat surface but have that circle there would be really pretty as well All right, so we will just use the fan on that for a minute while we uh, let that cool and then I will add in a little bit of moss and a little bit of painting to finish it up before we attach on the flowers. Okay. So it's important just to make sure that that is all going to sit really nicely and nice and strong. Uh, I'm going to grab a paper towel to do the moss on because I don't want to get that everywhere. Actually, let's grab two paper towels. So I'm just going to put that out here, still using the fan, and I'm going to attach that on with piping gel. So you can definitely use the piping gel um, from the, uh, uh, I have this little bottle applicator from uh, Chef Nick. So I'm just going to use that to kind of put a little bit of piping gel in between the gaps, or you can use a paintbrush. This one is kind of precise though, a lot more precise than a brush, so it's definitely going to give you more dexterity with that. And just anywhere that you kind of want it to stick, we'll put a little bit of that piping gel. 
right. Perfect. So piping gel, and then I'm going to take my moss. You can use a little spoon or um, a scoop or something like that if you want to. I'm going to use my silicone tools. One of them has this little scoop uh, that you can use for like impressioning for like smiley faces and eyes and things, but it's also really good for pouring. You can scoop the ice malt with it as well. And I'm just going to put a pretty generous amount of the moss in there first, and then we'll just use a brush to move it around. So I'm not being too precise with it at first. We will clean it all up at the end. I just want to get it all filled in each of the little crevices. All right. And now I'm going to go in with a flat brush, and I'm just going to brush it off of the pebbles and into all of the crevices and make sure it's nice and flat. And then we'll also brush it off of the edge of the outside since we still want to maintain that bright blue. Okay. And then we will just clean that up. And if you feel like it's not um, staying in place, you can put a little bit more piping gel over it or you can just kind of pack it down. And then when you spray the glaze, it will help to uh, hold everything together as well. Okay, so I'm just brushing off the pebbles, making sure they're nice and visible because we don't want to cover up all the hard work of those pebbles. All right. Perfect. Okay, and then the finishing touch is going to be to add a little bit of paint to make everything come together a little more. Now, one thing that you can do to help to add texture is to use a piece of aluminum foil and add some texture to the top of the rocks. If I was going to do that, I would have done it beforehand, before I put the crackers on, because the crackers will catch on fire if you torch over them. So don't do it um, after, but if you wanted to do it uh, on top, if you didn't want to do as much painting, you could do a little bit of texture with some... Um, foil on the tips of the rocks and that will add like a mossy finish to it so that when you paint it almost already has the texture rather than having to add in a lot more depth with different colors and adding in you know more so of the um, light greens and dark greens and things in order to get that um, texture and that depth but so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just add a little bit of paint but if you wanted to add in some texture onto them first you definitely can and it definitely will help to save you a little bit of time so I would just heat up the ice melt with the torch really lightly, and then I would uh, give it about 10 or 15 seconds before stippling it with the piece of foil so that the foil didn't stick. Um, but I'm just going to show you with a little bit of the paint. I'm going to go with some green. So I'm using leaf green. And on another section, I'm going to do some sunshine yellow. And a little bit of white. The white I'm actually going to mix into the green, and that's going to add an opacity to the colors so that they're going to stand out really nicely. Oh, there we go. A little overflowing white. Okay, and then I'm thinning it with some dilution solution, which will make it paint on very, very smooth. All right, use, I can just use my brush here. I'm going to grab some of the yellow, just stir that in. So it's a little bit more of a lime green, a Nicholas Lodge green, if you will, <laughs> apple green. All right, so see how I'm just stirring in a little bit of that yellow and that white to make it nice and opaque. I want it to kind of match in with the um, green of the moss so it all flows together nicely. But if it's a little different, it's okay. It'll just add in some contrast. All right, and now I'm going to use, you can use a paper towel or you can use a puffy brush or I'm gonna use a fan brush. And I'm just going to take a tiny bit and just start to kind of stipple it over the surface. Okay, and just add on a little bit of texture onto the rocks. You don't want to do too much because you don't want to lose the definition of the rocks in the texture of the moss, but this is just going to kind of help to tie the whole piece together so that it looks like it has some more realism and some more depth. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll go in with my white, grab a little bit more of that. Okay, I'm gonna mix a little bit of that into the green to make like a lighter tone. Go over that again, and I'm being pretty messy with this because I'm gonna wipe some of it off. I tend to like to just add a whole bunch of things and then remove rather than uh, being super duper precise and careful at first because if I am super precise, I'm going to be super precise and it's gonna take me a lot longer because I'm overthinking it. <laughs> so I just add on little specks of that color. I'm gonna hold it up so you can see what it looks like to start with. 
you could be a little bit more, you know, covering with this. You can add more, um, you know, around it. And then I'm going to use a paper towel, just a dry one that I crumpled up, and I'm going to remove some of that. And I'm also spreading it around a little bit. Okay. And it just removes so you see some of the brown through it. If I get any of the green on the blue, I can use a little bit of clear dilution solution to take that away. And again, that's just going to kind of give it more of like a grassy, mossy finish. So it looks a little more natural. And because the tree has so much texture, I want to bring texture into the other pieces too so that they all look like the same artistic style and they all match really nicely. Okay, and it's up to you how much of the paint you blot off, if you want to leave it more painterly looking or if you want to take some off. Okay, I'm just going to take a little bit of the clear dilution solution and a clean cavity of the palette with a nice clean brush to take that green off. So I basically just dilute it <laughs> and just wipe it away. It may dry a little bit matte where you put some paint, but once you glaze it, it will all come back. And I will hold this up so you can see the texture of that now. See how it's a lot more natural. If you accidentally overgreened, you can go back and you can use a little bit of the brown gel color with some white and you can bring in the dark colors again. So if you need more contrast or you want to break it up, you can definitely use the brown for that. It just depends on how heavy handed of a painter you are, or how careful or uncareful you are. Um, you see how that makes them kind of mix together and not stand out quite as much. Since the real draw to this is we want to draw the eye to the flowers. We want to make sure that that's the focal point. If you have too much going on in a piece, sometimes it can just um, be really chaotic chaotic looking. So that way you still see the rocks, it still gives you a really nice effect and a really nice finish, but it's not going to be necessarily the thing that draws in your eye since there's so much contrast with the green and the blue against the brown. Um, it's about kind of using um, different paints and different shading and things to pull your eye in different directions and to give you a really nice kind of balanced piece. All right, so as that dries for a second, I'm just going to clean up some of these paints and we are going to then put everything together. All right, so move this messy mat. Yes, definitely. Um, we do want to spray it with the glaze, but you want to spray this piece before you spray the flowers because you will generally spray a little bit more on this than you would on the flower. The flower was just a very delicate sort of glaze over it. This one, you can, uh, you still want to do a light layer. You don't want it to be dripping or anything, but it definitely will be good to um, not do too much. So I would glaze this piece separate and then glaze the other flowers like Chef Nick showed you and then put them together rather than so um, risking it. Or the, the leaves, leaves, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. The flowers, you want that more like a matte More finish. of a matte finish. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to pop this ice small back in. Perfect. So yeah, spray the finished piece with the glaze, again, away from everything. And then um, you can spray the leaves like Chef Nick showed you and then put everything together after that to make sure that you don't get any overspray on anything that you don't want. All right, so we have our tree base here with our little garden at the bottom, and then Chef Nicholas has just brought in his flowers, so we are going to start putting it together now. Um, as glue, I'm, I'm just popping a little bit more ice melt back in the microwave, so it's the same uh, bronze ice melt that I'm using for the tree, and that's the way it just melts into it. It really will adhere very nicely, but it'll also, the color will blend together and you really won't be able to see it. So just pop that in for another 30 seconds until it gets nice and pliable again and it's nice and liquidy. You want to make sure your glue is really, really melted so that it's not going to be too thick, otherwise it won't adhere properly. So with something like this, you want those flowers on there. We don't want any hurricane situations blowing them all off. So <laughs> <laughs> we want to make sure that that is all secure. Okay. Pop it on here. So yeah, go for it. Also, like if you have a little cookie turntable, that's a good way because then you can like turn it around. You know, we're just using the back of the mold, so that makes it great. Yeah. So we'll see our sugar is really molten here, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, so we'll give that a second to cool yeah. down, and that way it will thicken up, and then that will be a really nice glue. And this works. Ice mold is a really good glue for lots of different things. You can use it to glue gum paste to gum paste. You can use it to glue um, pretty much anything but chocolate, because chocolate's heat sensitive, so you don't want to melt it. But ice mold to fondant, ice mold to gum paste uh, is just a really nice glue, because it dries almost instantly, and if you're using clear, you really won't see it. So it's a really nice, strong, kind of like an edible hot glue. Totally. And then you want to, you want to use a, um, obviously a silicone, these are the Atico, um, obviously silicone tip ones that Sydney was using, so mm -hmm. these are available for semi-cakes, and this is obviously Innovative Sugar Works, so this is a silicone tipped 
because obviously you need something that's not heat sensitive definitely to, to attach yeah you can use like a popsicle stick too or a toothpick or something like that as well if you want to yeah. do we have a question yeah sandra would like to know how long can you keep this piece um what she's i think really asking about is the will the crackers get moldy over time unlike the ice melt piece um, I've had the crackers on pieces for months and personally I haven't had any issue because I don't really keep them in like a damp place or anything. Plus they're sprayed so nothing can really get through that um, edible glaze. Um, so I haven't had an issue. Uh, of course it is kind of, does kind of, you know, look like mold so <laughs> you do want to keep an eye on it. Um, but I have not had an issue with my pieces as long as you're in like a cool dry place. Of course we keep the air conditioning on all the time so I've never really had a problem with it. Um, I don't see, uh, obviously if it's going to be eaten they could get kind of stale. After, yes, you know, yes. being out in the air. So if you want to add that at the last minute, it should be fine. But for things that aren't going to be eaten, I've never had a problem with it. All right. All right. So obviously our isomold is now, you can see it's settled. settled. So we're going to use this. So if you were going to use the leaves individually, you know, these would be your individual leaves. So I'm just going to dip my, and then you can put the, either the isomold on the back of the leaf or you can put it onto the, and it's probably easier to put it actually onto where you're going to have it. And we're just going to just attach the leaf. And then I'm just going to come in with yeah. the little fan once it's in position. A little, little fan like that. And then you can just use, like I'm using the smaller, the finer end. And just sort of like if you have any little areas, you can just drizzle a little bit of extra isomalt onto Ooh. there and it falls <laughs> off. There we go. I'm going to put a little tiny bit more onto it. Yeah. That's a good yeah. telling to just tell you, hey, I need more. That's all it is. Exactly. It kind of tells you what it needs if it needs a little bit more glue. Remember, put gloves on when you do this as well, just in case <laughs> any should squash out. There we go. And so, Perfect. So, so, of course, you could put the, you know, do the leaves all over that. And then your cherry, you know, so whether you're going to use individual cherry. Now, you're going to cut the uh, the ends of those, as I said, quite, quite short, okay? So about a quarter, about a quarter of an inch, usually. And then you see, like, here, and actually while Sydney was doing, I obviously put my calyxes on the bud that I didn't have the calyx on. And so I've got little florets or little groupings of leaves and things like that. So, of course, again, you can take your individual so just sort of have a have a think about where you want things to go as mm -hmm. far as like do that and again like so little cracks and crevices but also you want to uh, make sure that the sort of the the actual branches there are going to have that nice um a nice look to them now you might get little cobwebs all right from the sugar especially if we've got the little bit of um the fan here as well <laughs> sorry it's actually a little i might have fanned it before you put it right. on sorry about that that's it there we go a little bit like a hot glue gun, you know, so you get those little bits, but they come off pretty easily off of there as well. And of course, once they're stuck, you can bend them with pliers or things as well. Like <laughs> candy, there we go. If the flowers weren't there to get rid of those yeah. strings, I would lightly torch over them and they would all go disappear, but I don't want to torch no. the flowers. We don't want a flaming Flambate. tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Obviously the thread would catch fire. Yeah, just use your fingers or tweezers. <laughs> Flambe, duh flowers yeah <laughs> so but you can just sort of you know decide on where you want them. and as i explained you know you can make this of course bigger and things like that and i'll bring in the finished one that we've done as well in a second we're just going to put just a little bit more but so you can actually put the you know you can put the sugar on the stem there as well so that's another way you can do that um or you can as i said you can use and just obviously hold that with a fan okay and so you've got that and you can just sort of I'm just going to come through the back here and if you have any little areas where you need just a little bit more connection you can of course use a little bit more sugar here and just work that around because it's in the same sort of color and then also you could take um, you know when you do like on the cherry blossom branches on the video that I showed and I put the link on there to my flower pro videos but you can also like put a little bit of piping gel like on the branches because on cherry trees like most trees you get like moss growing mm -hmm. on on the trees so you could also add a little bit of like moss there as well that would uh, be really you, pretty you, yeah well, that's the way you put that put those on but you you sort of got the idea of like how you how you place that onto there yeah I can switch the camera up so they can see yeah. it from the side here there we go we got it so this is the one that we just put together. We're just going to put a couple uh, flowers on because, of course, that is just, you know, kind of picking and choosing where exactly you want the flowers to go, how many you want. That's all personal preference. Um, but it looks really, really pretty. Even just with a couple on it, it's just kind of like those statement flowers yeah. that I think look really nice. Um, and then we have the one that is already made down here to show you kind of a version of having 
a whole bunch of yeah. flowers and buds and those beautiful leaves. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. And we'll post the <laughs> photograph of this finished one as well. Definitely, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you can see them all together. And you see as that one here has got five flowers on it. So always when you're using flowers, like in an arrangement, like in floristry, but when I do sugar flowers, you always generally work in odd numbers. So like, you know, three, five, seven, nine. Mm -hmm. So that's why I gave you nine stamens. So if you wanted a fuller, because the other thing is, this is pretty much almost like just one-sided, okay? But of course, if you wanted to, you could add flowers here as well. Definitely. So that's that's why, as I said, in the kit, I've included nine stamens. We also did post the uh, link to the stamens. As I said, those are on Amazon. There is a link Perfect. there. And those of you in the UK, uh, you can just do the same search because that is actually a British company that, that manufacture that. But as I said, you know, you use trim, like I talked about, like in my Flower Pro Members Club, I use that for the Lotus. That's and such a good idea. It's sort of, but it's, it's a very inexpensive way to make stamens. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so as I said, you can use that. And of course, you can also buy that trim in white so you could dust it different colors as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So. Very nice. So, yeah. <laughs> There we go. We have our <laughs> cherry blossom bonsai. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any final questions, we'll be looking at the chat. I absolutely love it. I just think okay, it came out so good. pretty. Good. Super natural. And again, combining mediums is one of the best ways to really add a lot of depth to your piece and show off your skill set, especially for competitions and things. That's yes. really important. Yes, totally. Yeah, definitely. Totally. So um, make sure, as we're waiting for any final questions to come in, if you guys have them, um, make sure that you check out Chef Nicholas Lodge. I'm going to put his website up here. It's down here in the corner, but I'm just going to pop that up on the screen um you have lots of tutorials and things yeah, right exactly i mean obviously i have my own youtube channel which mm -hmm. is nicholas lodge school and then obviously as i said i put the links uh to the uh nicholas lodge.in which is that is my sugar in website so that's mm -hmm. where you would order if you're wanting to get the flexi pay straight away and as i said my dusting powders um as they remember we are traveling here in florida for the next week so mm -hmm. the thing is is we will be back in atlanta a week today yes the 26th so we will be and so our shipping department is actually closed at the moment so if you are wanting to order anything obviously as i said and you're not in a rush we will just ship it you can place the order but we won't be shipped out till next monday okay exactly um, and uh, as i said we uh we are um, obviously uh if you have any questions, you know, obviously you can message me as well. And yeah, then, definitely. Uh, yeah. You can always message us. And um, yeah, those kits, I believe we have one more kit that's readily available. And then again, just like Chef Nick just said, um, it'll be about a week or so until yeah. the next ones are ready. But you can order those on seamycakes.com. So those are available. You can order them um, even if you don't mind waiting the week and then they'll just go out. You'll get a little note to make sure that um, you know that. And then, but we do have one more that is ready to go out um, that we have here. Uh, so make sure that you check that out. And of course, for more ice melt tips and things like that um, on seamycakes.com, you can follow great, all my great. links to find the YouTube channel yeah. and everything like that. And this is obviously we've got several other collaborations we've done like yes. in Atlanta and Florida so we have some fun Definitely. things you can find on Simi Cakes. And yeah, there um, I have yeah. we have a whole bunch on our YouTube channels, we have on Facebook, you can find lots of things and on Cake Flicks. Yes, we're doing right. another upcoming uh, surprise Cake Flicks piece yes. um, that we're working on this weekend too so stay tuned for that. We'll both yeah. post about that when we can. Um, do we have any other questions I or anything? Mine was wondering if there's an edible stamen. Edible stamen? Well, you can make like corn if you use corn silk. So, oh, like for example, pretty. with now sweet corn in season, what you do is you take the like the silk off the sweet corn, and uh, and then you what you do is you sort of wrap the you can just sort of basically use some isomol and glue the little ends together, and then you can actually use so it would get the same and that would be a totally edible statement. Like a lot of people, like you know Karen Portaleo just did a huge installation in Atlanta. Where she used it for hair, so the corn silk from the sweet corn. Very cool. So like, so like in my Flower Pro Members Club in June, we're doing like English garden roses. I'm going to be showing them how to use corn silk for the center of like a garden rose. So it's sort of a you know fun technique. But I mean, generally speaking, when you start using wires, it's not going to be then an edible product. But as I said, you could right. totally make these. But like when I do the little blossoms, like on cookies or stuff. You can just make them flat, dry them in the convoluted foam, and then what you do is you can just put a little piping gel in the middle, and I use the little tiny non pareils the really with the yeah, tiny ones. Yeah, that would be pretty. And that just is perfect for like a cookie, or you could pipe them with royal icing as well. And Very the royal cool. icing would be another way you could do it. It'd be a bit tedious, but yellow mm -hmm. royal. You, you could can use wafer little, paper yeah, probably white too, wafer right? Wafer paper is, again, yesterday we did wafer paper. You cut like a fringe and then roll it around like a little jelly roll, so you can make obviously exactly. a wafer paper. Yeah, so there are alternatives. Thanks. Everybody absolutely loved it. They thank you so okay, good, much good. for doing the collaboration together. Thank Yay, you. that was so much fun. Thank you so much yeah, for being here. Thank, thank you for coming good. to visit Happy, us. Happy, vaccinated. <laughs> yeah, yep. yes, yes, that's right. Together. I know, yeah, it's yeah. amazing. It's been almost a year, yeah, I think, yeah, since we saw each other. So It's been nice. We've both been vaccinated fun. and everything, so it sort of felt like semi-normal the other night as well.
yeah. having a time together. So, but yeah. anyway, I hope everybody stays safe and gets Definitely. vaccinated Definitely stay soon. healthy. And yeah, we look forward to seeing a lot of you. Obviously, a lot of you are probably planning on coming to Cookie Con. You know, we have Cookie Con in September in Orlando. We have Cookie yep. Con in October in Dallas. We'll both be there. And mm -hmm. then we have, um, obviously, the, uh, you know, uh, Keg Expo in, uh, in, um, in, uh, um, Fort Worth, you know, yep. that's going to be in July. So, yeah, so we're starting to get back to yes. sort of some sort of normality. We miss you guys. So yeah, hopefully yeah. <laughs> we will be able to see you in person soon. But it's been awesome. Thank you for being here and for watching the live. Um, yeah, if you have any other questions, you're welcome to message us and we will be yeah. happy to answer them. And uh, we will see you next time. Yep. Good. Okay. And we'll post photographs of the finished piece. So take Absolutely. care, everybody. Yep. Thank see you. Soon. Bye. Bye.